Well, Scott. Hey. It's been another week and we've avoided... It's been... Uh, we've avoided Old Pig Beach. <laughs> no, no more Pig Beach for us. Uh, someone uh, actually pointed out that uh, uh, Cersei from uh, Homer's Odyssey is actually a Pig Beach. A beach that turns you into a pig. Oh. Yeah. So are you saying that I'm in Homer's Odyssey? <laughs> you could be. <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> Okay, well, now I can't go to any beach ever for fear of it being Pig Beach. <laughs> I also think I heard that HBO Max is doing a Cersei series. So I'm keeping my eye on that. Huh. Because anything where someone might turn into something, I... You're, all, you're on board. You're, I've, I've got my ear to the ground your, on. Your ears are going forward, then backwards, and then back, <laughs> back to the front. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, is, did I say this is the worst year of our lives? No, because I started out. You did. You're, you know what? I hate to have to do this so... So, so we're recording it again? So deep into the mix, you're fired. All right, see ya. <laughs> I will be playing the role of Drew. I'm Drew. <laughs> this is my podcast. <laughs> I'm going to do this for an hour and a half. <laughs> I, I'll hold you to that. <laughs> Please don't. No, that you're, you're doing it or you get the fuck out. Were you doing Cersei research? Cer Cersei search? Cersei search? Yeah, I was doing Cersei search. Of, uh, what would you find? Cersei Lannister. Oh. That's what it came up with. Does she fuck? Uh, I mean, her it's brother. Cool. I mean, when you got a brother, when you have a Nikolai Coster Waldo type brother. Waldo? Like he's Where's Waldo? Isn't he? Isn't that what it's it is? It's Waldo. Waldo. Walter. Wal oh, it's a combination. Walter, Walter Waldo? No, it's, it's Walter Matthau if it was one word. Waldo. <laughs> Waldo. <laughs> but if you have a Nikolai type brother, why would you ever fuck outside your family? Oh, I agree. I mean, he's got a weird nose, but other than that. Picky, picky, picky. <laughs> Yeah, Drew, fine. Drew, he's got a weird nose. You know, he's also got a golden hand <laughs> and a, that he can finger you. And with. he's part of the Thick Hog community. And he's part of the THC. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's an HBO Max eight episodes. Uh, it's a modern day adaptation of the myth. Okay. Uh, ba -ba. It's the same people that wrote Jurassic World and Planet of the Apes. And... Oh, the good, the good, the Tim Burton one. <laughs> oh, and they wrote live action Mulan. Oh. And noted moneymaker live action Mulan. And they wrote they uh, wrote the sequels to the upcoming Avatar movie. Man, all the hits. Uh, Can it keep getting better? But it it doesn't have any like announcement of like production yeah. time or like yeah. It just I know says they, eight episodes. Yeah, I know they announced that like when they like when HBO Max started. So I figured they'd be somewhere into you'd, it but you'd who knows. think but you'd be wrong i would um oh we should push the movie thing because we got one more week of that what's the movie thing the thing where people send us money oh okay <laughs> the you mean the i the, guess all of this you is mean the, the pyramid scheme the pyramid scheme <laughs> okay here's what you do you pick a movie and send us money but then you can get five people beneath you to pick a movie and send <laughs> you money and then you send us a little bit of that money <laughs> so that that way we end up watching 58 movies yeah but also we're billionaires that is true so pyramid schemes are the best pyramid schemes rock if you're p.s everyone like shits on pyramid schemes if you're at the top of one you yeah. make a shitload of money yeah so just do your own pyramid scheme yeah and here is our pyramid scheme <laughs> <laughs> send us 25 bucks to paypal.me slash not scott henson paypal.me slash not scott henson 25 bucks per movie of your choice pick a movie we will watch it and review it uh, preferably a movie that is findable and is under two and one half hours, which I don't think is too much to ask. You've got one more week to do this if you're listening to this show on the day it drops. Uh, deadline is uh, end of day, Thursday, August 26th. So you've got exactly a week from now. So get them in. Uh, they've been coming in pretty nicely so far. So we've got a... Uh, 
I'm gonna say it now: a full episode and probably a second full episode already. I, I would, I would say we're looking at two full episodes. Yeah. So fuck it, push us to three. We don't care. What are not? To, we're not, we're not, little movie sluts. Not to say the movies, but how many do you have left that we've been? Like half, a little bit less than half, a little bit more than half. To watch? Yeah. More than half. More than half, okay. Yeah. But uh, if uh, as le- the the second episode would be a couple weeks after, so I've got less than half. Fancy you. Although there I think there's a couple new ones that I haven't told you about. Really? Yeah, I Drew, I I like uh withholding information. Oh, from you me. like withholding information from the guy who has to also watch the same movie. That's as correct, you? because knowledge is power. Uh, yeah. And if you know everything that I know, then where does that leave me? Out in the cold looking like a fool. I mean, the last... Looking two, like a fool with my pants on the ground, the last Drew. Two, Is that what you want? Do you the, want me looking like a fool with my pants on the ground? Absolutely. Okay. The last two you told me were two days ago. So has there been more since two days ago? I think so. You bitch. <laughs> you absolute bitch. You fucking bitch. But I th- as far as telling the people what they need to know, I think I said, yeah, you got a week to send us 25 bucks per movie to paypal.me slash notsconenz. If you don't have PayPal... That's okay. There's a link in the YouTube description for this very episode and the ones surrounding it. I, I have to send us money regardless. I have to tell you something that I wanted to do. But is it a secret? But absolutely nobody in my life is reliable. I see. At all. Okay. Um, so hopefully by saying this out loud on the podcast, it will happen. Oh, so, you, okay, you've been reading The Secret, obviously, and you're putting it out into the world. Yes. So it will if I, manifest and if come I back If I put it you. out into the universe, yeah. the universe will manifest it for me. Have you put this on your vision board? It's on my vision board. Good. It's in my dream journal. Great. It's also tattooed right above my ass. <laughs> uh, so Be, Beside the bullseye. I was trying to get someone to pay money... Because obviously I couldn't do it because you would see my name. Veronica couldn't do it because you would see her name. Oh, I see. And, I see where this is going. And I couldn't get anybody that like you knew. Yeah. Because then you would be like, no, fuck you. You needed an outside third party. I needed an outside third party yeah. to send $25 to you and request a Pixar movie. Oh. So that you would have I would, to I would watch actually a Pixar re- movie. I would actually refund it. Really? Yes. Hmm. I would actually, I would refund it or get them to pick. That I'm, is, I'm keeping the streak alive. That is very funny. It, my my hatred of Pixar is the only thing <laughs> that keeps that, you alive. <laughs> well, it's one, the only thing that keeps me alive, and two, it's the only thing that trumps me being a movie slut. Right. I wanted somebody to request uh, Toy Story Four <laughs> to not, or, so that you could keep your train of oh, only s- seeing, seeing the, the last the fourth one in a of series. a franchise. <laughs> And also, you wouldn't know anything from the first three. Yeah. So it would just be like, what the fuck am I watching? I feel like I could piece it together. Tom Hanks fucks Randy Newman or something. Yeah. 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 He's also... Randy Newman sings, you've got your dick in me. (laughs) Tom Hanks also has a girlfriend who's got sheep, and he probably fucks the sheep. Okay. Maybe I should watch these movies. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's an autistic spoon in in the most recent one. You're an autistic spoon. Spoon face. Are you calling me a spoon face? <laughs> Is that a racist term? Uh, it was a Tosh thing where he was going... Remember he had the panel with like a black guy, a Jewish guy, a white guy, and then oh, an yeah. Asian lady. Yeah. And he was just making up fake racist terms. <laughs> and he said spoon face. And she goes, I think that's offensive. Asian people have round faces. That's like a spoon. <laughs> that's why we already call you pan face pan as face. a real racist term. <laughs> yeah. You silly bitch. Also because I would hit them in the face with a pan. Sure. Uh, well, that's how that's how they got that way in the first yeah, place. Yeah, we learned it's the uh, Mark Wahlberg training uh, regiment of beating up Asians, <laughs> just brutalizing Asians, brutalizing Asians on your free time and getting away with it. Getting mostly. away with it. I mean, he was Vietnamese. They're a Mark lower, Wahlberg was Vietnamese. They're a, they're a lower class. That's how he got away with it. <laughs> no, guys, I'm Vietnamese. <laughs> Guys, have you heard about this? Have you seen, seen this? We're all, we're all beasts. God, I, I love a movie that makes a bad actor somehow forget any acting training he has and yeah. become so much worse. Yeah, he's just, he's an out of breath teacher who doesn't know anything. Who doesn't know uh, where the bees went. Yeah. What a dumb movie. <laughs> you know who knows where the bees went. 
Nicolas Cage. Yeah, they're on his face. Yeah, stinging him. They went from the happening to the Wicker Man. They they went from there. It's a it's a real uh, multiverse situation where all of the bees from the happening universe. Yeah. all went to the Wicker Man universe. Exactly. And there's too many bees. Oh, so they're like they're everywhere. You yeah, just, you got to use them in your everyday life. Not the bees. Not the bees. <laughs> oh God, not the bees. Uh, he does front kick a woman, which is amazing. Yeah, it's it's a stupid, boring movie for the first three quarters, but the last quarter really yeah. pays off. The last quarter is a real dude's rock uh, <laughs> until the very end. Yeah, when a dude briefly stops rocking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, is he? In a bear costume when he kicks the woman? Mm-mm. No. No, bear costumes uh, much later. Later? No. Yeah. Or earlier. I don't know. Later. Yeah. Also, bear costume is also Midsommar. Yeah. There's multiple pagan uh, rituals. Uh, with Midsommar is also the Wicker Man. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, I know. but Better bear costume in Midsommar, though. I'll give it uh, that. Worse movie. Maybe. Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I like you hate it more than me. I also don't like it though. And then a lot of people really like yeah. it. And a lot of people think that the director's cut that is an additional like 30 minutes is so much better than the original. I will not, I have not seen the director's cut. It probably it. is, and I'm probably not going to see it. Um, I would have liked it. Well, okay, number one, her name, her last name is Pooh, which I like. Yes. Um, I think she's attractive. Um, yeah, but, the, but. The, the 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 really the only problem She's more attractive in a bear costume. Yes, but yes. she wasn't in the bear costume. It was one of the dudes. That's right. Well, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the only like the the main reason I hated it is because it was the Wicker Man. None of those characters are even remotely likable or redeemable. Yeah, no, you're rooting That's for them the all to die. Point. That's the whole point. Yeah. is that you have these characters that are trapped in this crazy it's a horror movie where you're rooting for the monsters the whole time the whole time yeah and, and also the monsters are boring also the monsters are white people the monsters are white people although they it makes you think they do makes make you think. one of them they force one of them to fuck one of the daughters yeah that's cool that's cool that's tight yeah but for the most part it's who there's no one to cheer for nope and it's three hours long like <laughs> that's what I hate about it. But that last visually ha- it was kind the of the extra cool half hour and... really yeah, it, it looks nice. Yeah, it looks it nice. Looks nice. It looks nice. It's not his best work. We know what his best work is. We know is. what his best work is. A little short film. <laughs> the strange thing okay. Ari Aster needs to make a feature length mm-hmm. The Strange Thing About mm-hmm. the Johnsons. Mm-hmm. That will be his opus. That will be Mr. Astor's the opus. The scene of him in the bathtub when the the, the, the door is getting kicked in. Ugh. And then he says, we don't lock doors in this house. Ah, oh, And he's like just clutching his chest in the bathtub so scared. And his mother downstairs just turns up just the tr- volume tr- on the TV <laughs> while her son brutally rapes her husband. Or at the wedding where he like, doesn't he like grab, or the, the barbecue where he like yeah. grabs his ass. <laughs> Like, full on gets them. This is the best. Oh, that's perfect. If you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor. The Strange Thing About the Johnson, an Ari Aster short pre hereditary. And it's the. If you like Ari Aster, you're really going to like Ari Aster after this. <laughs> if you don't like Ari Aster, you're still going to if, like if, Ari after If Ari you're Aster a fan this. of um, uh, taboo type pornography, uh, this is right up your alley. Yeah, if you're in, if you find yourself in the market for black gay incest, <laughs> have I got the movie for you? Can I make a recommendation? <laughs> Can I make exactly one recommendation? I can't think of a second one off the top of my head. Oh, of black gay incest? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'd have to flip through the Rolodex a bit <laughs> to find a second one. But uh, go, go definitely your, start with that. Go through your personal files mm-hmm. on on your in your taxes folder. Yeah, yeah. I believe I believe it's now titled uh, "Mom, Don't Look." <laughs> <laughs> Mom, don't look. Dad, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, what's the Anthony Justnick joke where he like accidentally sent sent nude pictures of his girlfriend to his mom and dad, <laughs> and then he had to reply like, "Sorry, mom, those were just for dad." <laughs> Ma- mom, don't look. Dad. Dot. 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 Winky face. <laughs>
uh, JK unless and, question mark. And then it's just, and then it's a trick, trick your dad into opening the file. And then it's just pictures of you rock solid. <laughs> <laughs> like you trick your dad into looking at your boner full, and, and full body. J- just to, oh, yeah, like to not, make it very clear. No. It's not someone else's yeah. boner. It's not you being gay and looking at other penises. No, it's, it's the boner you that showing you full naked with an erection to your father. This is what you to created, your dad. blood related father to show him what he made. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dad, aren't you proud of your little boy? <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. We got 63 years to talk about. Yeah. So should we get to it? Yeah. And I, I mean, like- and, and for those who feel like this is too short a preamble, one, you got black gay incest, so don't be a whiner. <laughs> and two, uh, if you listen to all the episodes, and you should, if you're not just one of those dicks who just listens to the movie one, uh... Maybe check out uh, last episode, uh, this uh, this past Monday's wrestling one, that what, uh, In Your House Over the Edge, uh, where you got a one hour and ten minute preamble. <laughs> Possibly our best ever. Yeah. I like, back in the... That, that, was, like, that was all the Pig Beach stuff, right? That was all the Pig Beach stuff, yeah. yeah. Back in the early days of not uh, the worst year of our lives, podcasts were, I don't know, four and a half hours, and there was... No structure, no nothing planned. As God it intended. Was just us fucking around. It was the wild west of podcasting. And those were And also nobody listened. <laughs> and no, was... Nobody listened. Yeah. Um that was just really more of that was more like just recording us as friends hanging out. Yeah. And like whatever For posterity. Whatever would come up was what we would talk about. Yeah. And there wasn't any plans. No. But then once we started doing nitros and there was somebody who was killing all the fun, <laughs> um, we tried to keep it to like what, half an hour? We started at half an hour. And the first several episodes were half an hour. And then yeah. once we got rid of, uh, once we, once we trimmed the fat... Uh, Interesting what, choice of words. Once we were, once everyone involved wasn't wearing a, uh, a man's <laughs> ear, then we we really once only out. once only half of the of the cast was wearing a man's ear. <laughs> yeah. Then things really picked up. Things really picked up. Uh, and of course, as we've heard from everyone on you know the comment sections, parlor. Uh, uh, Newsmax. Newsmax. <laughs> uh, that uh, all the all the, to- uh, the, the my pillow social uh, network. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember what it's uh, called. That uh, the the preamble is definitely the favorites uh, of most people, but I feel like this one there's there's opportunity to have a little bit more leeway with the conversation. We're not in yeah. such a hurry to. You know, we're not reading names and names and names and we're names. We're taking a relaxing we're stroll. Uh, yeah. There's down gonna be, memory lane. There's going to be some possibilities for a little bit of relaxed conversation. Uh, a little, Good. A little fireside I've had, chat. I've had too much stress. Oh, yeah. You. I need to unwind. The most stressed man I know. Look at me. I'm I'm getting wrinkles. You're, you're, you're withering away. <laughs> Hope I didn't go to Old Beach. No, no, no. Okay. You didn't go to Old Beach. You didn't go to Hog Beach. Big Beach. <laughs> You, uh, you go to Thick Hog Thick Beach. Thick Hog Beach. That's a good beach. Now that's a beach. Where's that beach? The beach that makes your hog thicker. Yeah. The, the beach that makes your hog thicker. <laughs> Every half hour is one inch. <laughs> oh my god. You would, like, there would be people, there would be so many dead bodies on the beach from everyone just... staying there too long and all the blood flowing yeah. to their penis and they die. Yeah. And then just people just, just dead bodies everywhere, but there's still more people coming walking constantly. out of there with their dicks and wheelbarrows <laughs> oh, yeah. o- over their shoulder and around their neck like Ooh. a boa constrictor. <laughs> Is that an exotic snake? No, it's my thick hog. It's my thick hog, baby. <laughs> Don't rub it or it'll knock me out or I'll die. <laughs> Or there will be no blood in my brain for yeah. too long and I'll die. <laughs> if, if I ever get sexually excited, I will forget math. I, I think maybe I said this on the podcast once before, like a, while, like a long time ago. I remember having my first sex ed class mm-hmm. when I was in grade five or six. And it was like a, a nighttime thing where we all went to the gym with our parents. This and, is. And we all sat like on the floor and there was like a, a sex educator at the front. And this all is were, risque. Parents, parents, night, night in the dark, mm. uh, and all our parents were like behind us, 
And we sat there and had to listen to this lady explain to us, like, sex and everything. And then she would ask questions. But, of course, all the questions were like, uh, what if you had, like, a 30-inch penis? And then they'd be like... The Are you a horse? But the lady answered honestly. She said, like, if your penis was too big and you got an erection... All of the blood flow out of your body into your penis would knock you unconscious. Yeah. So you wouldn't be able to get an erection. But of course, like we're only asking it so that we can laugh our asses Absolutely. off at somebody saying out loud "32 inch penis." That's the point of questions yeah. in sex ed. Yeah. Like there was definitely like, uh, can you suck your own penis? Uh, I think there was like, if you remove a rib, yes. Do girls have penises? And then they're like this, but this was the nineties. So they said, no, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. There are two genders and never the twain shall meet. Yes. And now there's like three year olds who have identity, sexual identities already. Yes. Yeah. And they're fluid. I feel like I'm a girl in a boy's body. You're three. You haven't learned to read yet. You're, you don't even, you're not even making memories. Um, you're Chinese. No, um, <laughs> you're Chinese. I don't know why I have such a vivid memory of that though, but I, I like, I remember sitting next to my friends and just laughing our asses off the whole time. Yeah. Nobody took it seriously. I don't even think afterwards our parents said like, so what did you learn? I think they were just like, well, that was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we spent our evening this yeah, way. Yeah, that, that would have been, God, I was in grade five in 1973. That sounds right. No. Um, I don't know. When, when, how old are you when you start kindergarten? Five? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I would have. You're been... ten, turning eleven in grade five. Okay, so I would have been, ah, uh, yeah, pro- probably eleven, because it would have been towards the end of the school year. Anyways, so what? That that would have been 1997. 90, 96, 97, Yeah. So we would have all been watching, uh, The Simpsons. Yeah. Constantly, our life would have been Simpsons and wrestling. Sure. So we were well aware of like vulgar language uh-huh. and tits and ass. <laughs> Yeah. So Yeah, not other people the reason people like old Simpsons is cuz they used to say cunt. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was nothing. Yeah. The, Simpsons I, used to be cool. Can we talk about how bullshit it is that we're the only place in like the world that doesn't just use it as a, as We're the only term? place in the Commonwealth for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I I But I, but I think there's like, you know, Spanish like in Mexico they use things yeah. that are like, yeah, I like guess along true. those lines. And like Europe, in Eastern Europe and stuff, they use it yeah. like it's nothing. It's definitely disappointing we went the American route on cunt and not the more uh, intercontinental, intercontinental ver- champion <laughs> version of it, where it's just the most common word in your vocabulary. Yeah. You, you dumb cunt. You dumb cunt. You stupid cunt. <laughs> Don't be a cunt. Oh, I wish we were more British. Yeah. And less not British. That's correct. Uh, yeah, so like we said, we got a lot of movies to get through. Uh, if we, if you've been paying attention and we said after we got out of the 90s, we would just be going literally backwards as far as the eye can see. We're going to 1927. Um, and just... We're going to any, Wings, Any maybe. notable uh, bad choices, wrong things, winning, omissions um, that either one of us feel happened throughout the course of the rest of the Oscars... Uh, I'm not going to do everything because there's obviously some that either just don't matter or the right thing won uh, or just we hadn't seen like early in the earlier years. There's just we haven't seen enough uh, that was nominated to really make an opinion. We don't have a lot for the 20s and 30s. 20s, 30s and even some of the 40s. There's not a lot of a lot of varying opinions on what won but i think in the 80s and 70s and 60s there's going to be some yeah notable uh mistakes made by the academy of motion pictures you done fucked up oscar so i guess we'll start at 1989 um, I get uh, again more off-air conversation we should have had. Sh- oh. Should I read the winners and then if there's any changes or just say the changes? Um, I think we can always say the best picture. Okay. And whatever else comes up comes up. Okay, so best picture for 1989 was Driving Miss Daisy, which looking at the nominees might be the worst one. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, but 
the, the Academy loves nothing more than an old white lady just throwing out N-words like she's Quentin Tarantino in the back of a car yeah. with Morgan Freeman driving. Morgan Freeman just Jessica Tandy driving says, a geriatric bitch around. She says the N-word more times in this movie than Don't Quentin Tarantino oh. has thought it in his entire has life. Has thought it? In his entire That's life. That's right. How about as many times as Alan Tudyk said it in 42? Oh. Which, by the way, is 42. It's the <laughs> amount of times he said it. That's, that's, what, called that's what it's called. That's what it's called. And that's why Jackie Robinson changed his number to 42 because he's Because that's like, how well, many times he got called. That's how many times I got called the N-word in one game. <laughs> uh, that's a that's yeah. a tougher streak to break than DiMaggio. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this one I got of the... Because so, you know, as we did in the 90s, it was the main four. Uh, pic- picture director, actor, actress. And then we didn't really touch on anything else unless there was big... Things. Yeah. So uh, I would say, like, for Best Picture nominees, Driving Miss Daisy is worse than Born on the Fourth of July, Dead Poet Society, Field, Field of Dreams, and My Left Foot. Foot. Yeah. yeah. Um, I Yeah, so I got three changes that I think in, for this year. Uh, the One of them is outside the big four. So as much as, okay. as, much as Denzel is an amazing actor, mm-hmm. uh, I think there's no way that Danny Aiello for Do the Right Thing doesn't fucking win. I, I'm with you there. Sure. Yeah, he, yeah. He's he's amazing in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then do, do you have... Like, my other two changes were... Again, Daniel Day-Lewis is an, um, is an amazing actor, um, but you'd never go full retard. And he was 97% retard Which is movie, not full. But it's pretty close. It's borderline. Don't me, get me wrong. Robin Williams' Dead Poet Society is maybe... The one of the mo- more underrated and underappreciated acting roles of the eighties. Yeah. Um, did I list? Yeah, Robin Williams is the only person I listed for actor. So yes. Yeah. Um, him, him, and Daniel Day. But um, yeah. I'm fine giving it to Robin over Daniel Day. And the and the other, sorry, the uh, the other supporting actor uh, was he? Yeah, well, uh, Martin Landau in Crimes and Misdemeanors is great. Hmm. Yeah. Yes. But I'll, I'll let Ayala have it. Ayala, yeah. And then uh, as far as best picture goes, I mean, we said that Driving Miss Daisy is the fourth, fifth best. Yeah. I, I still, man, do the right thing. Do the right thing is absolutely the best picture for me. It's between... Well, I wrote down four. I wrote down Field of Dreams, Do the Right Thing, Do the Right Thing, and Crimes and Misdemeanors. It's between Do the Right Thing and Crimes and Misdemeanors. That, it's actually one of my favorite Woody Allen movies. I really like it. Um... But yeah, do the right thing is pretty great and got pretty fucked. Pretty fucked on uh, almost all the yeah, it's like everything but screenplay. Did you get two noms? Two noms. Uh, two screenplay and supporting actor were the only ones that got. Yeah. So yeah, I, I man, I that it, sh- it should have at least been nominated director and picture. Best director, yeah, director for sure. For sure, but I mean, when you've got. Oliver Stone, Woody Allen, Kenneth Branagh, uh, Jim Sheridan, who, you know, does all those Irish movies. Is it Irish? It's Jim Sheridan. And, uh, and then, of course, the Dead Boat Society, Peter Weir. It's yeah. Two, in my eyes, for the Academy, they're like, well, we can't nominate a we, black guy. We can't, we can't not give it to Kenneth Branagh for another fucking for, Shakespeare movie. For another movie. fucking Shakespeare movie. Imagine <laughs> not doing that. Uh, but yeah, th- those are the ones I had for that one. Yeah. Uh, and, and nothing else for you? Like, that's all the same? Uh, no, that's all the stuff I had. Uh, so 1988. There's some fun, not really Oscar-y movies that were nominated yeah. in 88. But like yeah. everything I have listed is not mm-hmm. Best Picture yeah. nominated. So Best Picture was Rain Man. Wrong. Yeah, I think it's okay. But it, it, it's, it, it's fine. It's it, fine. It is It is a little boring at times. Yeah. Um, so I made changes to all four, all four big ones. There are, and I made a uh, note for a really good movie that I want to give a shout out to. Uh, is it? Does it have some sort of nomination? It has nomination. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Bull Durham. Ah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Rules. Yep. Uh, it's one. It's one of the best sports movies ever made. For sure. Uh, but I just didn't think it was worthy enough for me to bump it into some of these spots. So. Right. Did, did you make any change? I made. I made four. I, I changed all four. I've got. Uh, I've got four movies listed. All are extremely. Fun movies. Uh, Coming to America. Oh, you're just saying the ones that were your notes or your honorable mentions. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, sorry, like, yeah, for, yeah. for my notes for each year, yeah. I have I just have like 
some movies listed, some actors listed. Gotcha. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So the the four movies I have down, none of which would ever win Best Picture, but all of which rock. Or, or probably any actual awards other than like technical stuff or yeah. screenwriting or something. Coming to America, yeah. Who Framed Roger Who Rabbit, Framed Roger Rabbit, Beetlejuice, might come up later. Might come up later, and one that for me gets at least picture actor supporting actor and maybe actress but maybe not because Jodie Foster is good in The Accused uh, A Fish Called Wanda one of my favorite movies hmm. I fucking love that movie me too yeah um, so as far as the actual awards yeah did you change um, I'll give I mean I'll give Cleese actor yeah uh, I was like actress uh, you could you could go Jamie Lee, but J- Jodie Foster's really good in The Accused, yeah, I agree, so that's I agree. that's fine. Yep. And uh, it, uh, Fish Call One doesn't ha- have to get director. Um, I would almost go Tim Burton, Beetlejuice for director. Yeah. And uh, it, and it gets Best Picture. And Fish Call Wanda. Fish Call Wanda, yeah. Yeah. I I uh, yeah for Best Picture, I also gave Fish Call. And and Kevin Klein absolutely keeps yeah, supporting keeps actor. the best. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fish Call Wanda for me was Best Picture. Uh, nice. I, Best director for me. Is I didn't know if you liked it as much oh, as I, I do. Love it. Awesome, yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's so good. Um, the yeah, best director. I went with Martin Scorsese for the Last Temptation of Christ. I actually haven't seen it, so uh, that makes it, a difference. It's one of his more different movies. It's, yeah, it, the way that it's shot and put together. Is... And had I seen it, I might be talking about. Would I be talking about Defoe for actor yeah, as well? Prob- yeah, probably. Yeah, um, for so best actress. Judy Foster in The Accused is very good, but I went with Sigourney Weaver for Girls in the Mist. Okay. Yeah, um, and then for best actor, I went I went fucking Michael Keaton for Beetlejuice. I'm fine with that. I absolutely. Want I have Keaton no problem with that. Yeah, yeah. I that movie. He he is so yeah. goddamn funny and, and delightful in that movie. I mean, there would maybe be an argument that he is supporting, even though the movie's named after him, because yeah. the the leads are technically Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis, but yeah, he's in the majority of the movie. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm um, fine with him being called yeah. actor. And uh, second place supporting actor, Arsenio Hall, <laughs> for Coming to America. <laughs> sure. Uh, so, 1987, uh, the winner was The Last Emperor. It's good, but it's boring. Yep. Um, so, for me, the note... This one has some really fucking fun movies. Yes. This one's got Predator. Yep. Robocop. Mm-hmm. The Princess Bride. Yep. Harry and the Hendersons. That's right. Um, I didn't write that, but I should have. And um, not necessarily on the funny side, but on the, like, I wanted to make a mention to is uh, Empire of the Sun is very good. Yes. Yeah. Little baby Christian Bale. Bale, Baby Christian Bale and young John Malkovich. Right. Yeah. And it's Spielberg, right? It's Spielberg. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But it's very good. Yeah. yeah. Um, But yeah, as far as I... I went with Cher from Moonstruck because... it, that movie is awesome and she's great in it. Sure, yeah. Um, especially for a non actress. Definitely for a non actress. I would maybe. And she's really fuckable in that movie. Yes. <laughs> I would maybe lean Glenn Close Fatal Attraction. Yeah. Because she's a real Absolutely. good yeah. crazy bitch. Absolutely. She's really, really good in that movie Glenn, as well. You're a crazy bitch. <laughs> and she's a woman with a man's name. Yep. Um, so, actor, I didn't go with gay actor Michael Douglas. I. Went... I. I don't know if I did, but uh, shout out to him for Wall Street and Fatal Attraction Attraction. in the same year. Yeah. That's impressive. Um, That's a good year. This was between two for me. Robin Williams in Good Morning Vietnam is really good. Yeah. Because it's a a serious acting role for him, which he's always really good in. But man, I love broadcast news. I also love so, broadcast so news. So William Hurt for me wins and, broadcast news. And you best be giving supporting actor to Albert Brooks. A- Albert Brooks 100%. And not, uh, and not uh, Sean S- Scottish <laughs> untouchable <laughs> Sean Connery. A big order. <laughs> yeah, no, Albert Brooks 100%. For, for sure. Yeah. Yes. And for director, I didn't go with Bertolucci, even though he's like the guy. It's he, Kubrick, right? Uh, I it, it's hard because it's also uh, Brian De Palma for the Untouchables because I yeah. fucking love De Palma and there's not a lot of opportunities for me to give him an Oscar because those going assholes forward. didn't nominate Blowout for anything. <laughs> they didn't nominate him for most things he did. He was really yeah. He's really not nominated for much. Really yeah. underappreciated. Uh, so I, yeah, I think 
Kubrick, yeah, but also I think I want to give it to Brian De Palma. That's fine. I'm, because I'm doing... it's not like Kubrick's not going to get mentioned later. Anyways. No, it's just uh, Full Metal Jacket, Kubrick's only good movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... I think I am going Kubrick for director. Yeah. Yeah. And then for picture, uh, it's hard. There's... Uh, what did I... I don't. I actually. The picture was the last. Oh, we said that. Yeah, yeah it's the last emperor. Uh, so yeah, for me, it was between um, broadcast news, Moonstruck. Yeah. And oh fuck, another one. Throw one from the train. That mm. movie, awesome. Yeah. Rules. Uh, yeah, I, I was really having a hard time picking best picture for this one. This one's yeah. It's between broadcast news. Full Metal Jacket and yeah. RoboCop. <laughs> and RoboCop? <laughs> yes. Yeah, RoboCop rules. Like, if we were doing five nominees, RoboCop's in there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and uh, I haven't seen Mate One, but people say it's really good. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah. I've never seen it. Uh, yeah, I... For what it's worth, I think it's one of David Cross's favorite movies. I don't really? know why I... I he, um... I think it's somewhere I have it in my head. I read it. It's got to be close to twenty years ago now. It's yeah. it's still clearly in my head. David, like the three movies David Cross listed for, like I don't know if there's favorite movies or like uh, lesser movies that people should watch that maybe they haven't seen. Matewan, Badlands, and uh, Bicycle Thieves. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Bicycle Thieves or the Bicycle Thief? I the, feel the, like I've seen both. Bicycle Thieves. The Bicycle Thieves. Yeah. The name is yeah yeah. Uh, I have seen two of the three. Good. No. You're two have, thirds of a David ha, Cross. Have I seen three of three? Have you seen Matewan? No, I've not seen Matewan. Then you've seen two of three. Then I've seen two of three. We did it. Um, I think best picture. I I, I want to go broadcast news. I think it's the first one I wrote down, so it's what I'm going with. Very honorable mention to Full Metal Jacket. Yes. Uh, now we get to uh, the year I was born, 1986, and it, there's some good stuff. Best picture was Platoon. Yep. I uh, did. I write notes. I wrote lots of notes for this, but lots I only, but notes. I only changed one uh, one of the winners. You better so, not have taken away that nice deaf lady's Oscar. I wrote Stand by Me. Uh huh. One of the best Stephen King uh, adaptations. Are the best Stephen King adaptations non horror? Well, we talked about it. Yeah, like yeah. Stand by Me, Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. Um, Green Mile has Green supernatural, Mile, but it's not horror. But it's not horror. by any means. Um, yeah, if you're going as far as like actual movies, yeah, probably. Yeah, I, the, it's the, interesting. The Mist is pretty great, but mostly, the, I mean, mostly the ending. <laughs> uh, it's the best. Ending. <laughs> and like you know, Thinner is really enjoyable. And, yep. But there's also a lot of bad ones too. So yeah, I would say his best adaptations are the the non horror ones. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I wrote Stand by Me, which is a great movie. Um, a really good and really underrated Clint Eastwood movie called uh, Heartbreak Ridge. Mm -hmm. Which is really, really good. Um, fucking Cronenberg's The Fly. The Fly. I, yeah, I, I've tried. To, <laughs> I've tried to shout out every single nominated movie that it's has TF, TF in it, yes. even if it's Fly TF. Even, look, <laughs> Grundle Fly, baby. Take it where you can get it. Yes, that's true. A hole's a hole. Uh, and then the last one I wrote was uh, The Mission. The mission is really underrated, underappreciated. I haven't seen the mission. Yeah, it's really good. Nominated for best picture. That's nominated for best picture. Uh, so, did you change any like? So, I wrote down a bunch of movies. Did I write down any actors? I wrote down Gene Hackman for Hoosiers, who I think was snubbed. Didn't hmm. even get a nom. Never seen it. It's good. Hmm. And Dennis Hopper got nominated for supporting actor, but did not win. Yeah. Lots of platoon nominations. Uh, yeah. Hannah and her sisters is really good. Yeah. yeah. Michael Caine, I'm not Michael mad Caine. at for supporting actor. No. But stuff I wrote down was The Fly, uh, The Color of Money. Well, yeah, which uh, Paul Newman won Best Actor for. Yeah. Which is really good. Um, you can make a case for... Tom Cruise supporting in that too. He was good. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, aliens, probably coming up later. Um, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm going to tell you it's coming up later. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, Blue Velvet. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm lukewarm on Blue Velvet. I'm I'm lukewarm on all David Lynch, but yeah, I think early, I think, I I think like, earlier Lynch is better. I think I like. I like genuinely like one David Lynch movie, and the rest I'm very lukewarm on. Yeah. <laughs> The rest I the rest I have to keep watching and keep not liking, but then watch it again because I think I didn't get yeah, it. Yeah, right. You're like, oh, okay, maybe if I maybe it's I'm, an ingenious little system. I'm, Lynch has set I'm up a couple here. years older, so maybe yeah. I'll understand it more. You watch, yeah. it, you're like, nope. Yeah, I, I don't. I didn't get it when I was 34, but but now, now I'm 38. I might get it. <laughs> 
Now it'll make sense. Now I'm an adult. I watched. I I was a boy an adult when baby. I an adult baby. A big ABDL. <laughs> Uh, did I re- uh, oh, sh- minor shout out to uh, the decline of the American Empire, uh, the uh, a Quebec movie by the same people who did uh, the Barbarian Invasion. You lost me at Quebec. I know, but I'm out. Uh, but no, they're both good. And uh, yeah, and Hannah, Hannah and her sisters and Platoon is everything I yep. wrote. So I, I I'm gonna have a hard time. Taking away Platoon Best Picture, but it's fucking aliens. <laughs> I think it's, it's aliens. It's absolutely fucking aliens. I, I mean, I'll leave right. Oliver Stone can keep Best Director because it's the the explosions, filming in the jungle, like the warfare yeah. and all that is incredible to have to put together. I'm telling Ridley Scott you said that, though. Good. 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 The fucking aliens. Uh, it's uh, like top five my favorite movies of all time. So, Well, that's probably enough to get Best Picture. Then. Yeah. Uh, when you're, you're Although ch- it would be funny if all of your top five movies were in 1986 and, and, yeah, and Aliens true. came fifth. <laughs> uh, no, they are not, but I wish they were. Um, so is that, that's it for you? You're not, you're not changing anything else? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so and also Aliens Best Picture for me. Nice. Uh, should I have been writing down your answers? Probably. Uh, it's, it's a little late now. Uh, 1985. Uh, the winner was Out of Africa. It's fine. Who cares? No, it's okay. It's it's an okay movie, but it's not... I guess if you're looking at uh, the other things that are nominated, it's right in there with the rest of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've never seen The Color Purple. I've never seen Kiss of the Spider Woman. I've never seen Prizzy's Honor and Witness is Boring. I have seen The Color Purple and I have seen Witness. Yeah, Witness is kind of boring. Yeah, I like the concept, but there's not a lot. Like you'd think there would be a lot more drama and action in it, and it's just sort of like, up. Oh, he's an Amish person now. Yeah, cool. I probably should see Kiss of the Spider Woman because yep, it uh, got a lot of nominations, and I love William Hurt. And do women turn into spiders? Mm, well, worth investigating. Worth but fear not, because there is a TF movie in 1985. Yeah, there is. Um. So. The big and we're not telling you what it we're is. We're not going to tell you. <laughs> are, well, is, are you nominating it for anything, or you just want to mention it? I think I'm nominating it for everything. Oh, it's going to win everything. I think so, but it's not going to. It's not going to win anything. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> but shout out to Lady Hawk. Shout out to Lady Hawk. A lady who's a hawk and a guy who's a wolf and a guy who's a wolf, but never at the same time. Weird. So they can't chat. <laughs> What is this? You've got mail, it's but <laughs> but with TF, it, it's you've got mail, but turning into animals. Oh, yes. uh, so a, a big note for me for this one is uh, Back to the Future. Obviously, a movie I fucking love. I assumed that would come up, but yes. it's not getting nominated for anything, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great. It's one of my favorite movies, but it's it's getting beaten out by something that I believe is actually the best movie made of this year. Um, for best actress, I, I don't know. I wrote actress question mark because I didn't care, but I also you didn't give it to Anne Bancroft for Agnes of God. Uh, oh yeah, that's oh no, sorry. that was it. yeah that was the one. Um, or, or even the winner, Geraldine Page for the trip to Bountiful. Yeah, this this was this was the year I think that. Oh, maybe not, because I've obviously heard of the color purple. Uh, but I think maybe and, oh, and out of Africa. But after this year, maybe. I you get a maybe, lot of maybe, maybe like, eighty four. You or, get a lot of best actress nominations for movies you've never heard never of. heard of. Yeah, going forward, it's a lot of I've never heard of. You like also some of the actor ones too. Yep. But at least for the most part, a lot of the actors I've heard of, if I've never heard of the movies, considering it's nominated in every cat major category, I know nothing of Prizzy's Honor. Me neither. All all I know is that Angelica Houston's in it, directed by John Houston, her dad. That's right. Yep. Probably one of his last. Uh, I was gonna say John Huston's old. Probably in the one of his last movies, I would assume. As I very panically scroll down, I mean, you could have just stayed at the very top. No, and you seen know when he. Uh, uh, so he did two more. The, two more, the, and oh, he directed one, The Dead. So it's his second last movie. Directed. And oh, also starring Angelica Houston, and then he was a pr- uh, writer, writer on Mister North. It's about Peter and his. Huge oh, Anthony dick. Edwards, Mister uh, Mister Er. Yep. 
and with also, hair, and also a basketball player on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, so yeah, so actress, I whatever. Um, did you make any changes? Do you have any notes on other movies? Two notes on other movies. Uh, shout out to the most horrifying movie ever made, Return to Oz. <laughs> that got nominated. Yeah, it did. I must have missed it. Was it like best? Des- set design or... or set design or maybe even special effects oh. most attractive child did it win that <laughs> hottest child <laughs> except for she's the ugliest child <laughs> i mean nobody's uglier than Fruza if you Ball. had <laughs> okay <laughs> If you had to fuck a child, it probably wouldn't be Feruza Ball. I wouldn't. I would. If there was like a list on a whiteboard of all the children. Yeah. I wouldn't even read the rest of the list. I would erase her name immediately. <laughs> However, Feruza Balk in The Island of Dr. Moreau. Now you're talking. Yeah. But she's not a child. No, that. I know. But she's an adult woman. I'm just talking Feruza Balk in general, yeah. not in terms of pedophilia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which pedophilia will probably come up later. Certainly. Certainly. Uh, so shout out to that. If you haven't seen the sequel to The Wizard of Oz, uh, the, the 50 years later sequel uh, starring Feruza Balk as Dorothy. However, much closer to the L. Frank Baum Oz books. Right. Than the much more sanitized Wizard of Oz. Uh, check it out. It's fucking crazy. And kids shouldn't watch it. Uh, yeah, it is not for children. I, I watched it too young and it scared me. I watched it... There's, o- like, a, there's like a pumpkin head character, There's a right? pumpkin head. There's a scary like gnome king. Uh, there, yes. There's a, there's like a moose head shit. Oh yeah, the moose head's like the front of the... The front of a couch that flies? The, yeah, the, or the bed or something? <laughs> Maybe a bed. Is it bed yeah. knobs and broomsticks? It but might be evil, bed knobs and broomsticks. Evil bed knobs and broomsticks? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's terrifying. It's truly horrifying. It's terrifying. Uh, I saw it at an oak. K age, my six years younger sister <laughs> saw it way, way too, too young, young. <laughs> and, and now she has her. emotional problems. Nice, nice, <laughs> yeah. So, check that out. Uh, also, shout out to uh, Disney movie The Journey of Natty Gan, which I have a very specific memory of watching it on vacation, I think, for spring break in San Diego, and uh. Crying you, you, at the, you didn't go to Havasu? Didn't go to Havasu. <laughs> uh, crying at the ending and not wanting my parents to see I was crying. <laughs> Very distinct memory Because they'll of that. beat you? I think because they'll beat me. Because they, they think you're a gay furry? I hope the... Little they, do they know. <laughs> that was probably it. Did that movie turn you into a, into a furry? There is a wolf dog in it. Oh. Human but, wolf dog, though? No. Ah, so you weren't sexually attracted to it? Also, it's a dog, so you wouldn't also, be sexually attracted to it? Yeah. Dogs are gross and dumb, stupid. <laughs> all, all of the above. Couldn't even kill how many dogs you wanted to. Nope. Do the math. Um, so I think yeah. those are my shout outs. shout outs. And then, yeah, the other ones I'd written down, uh, Purple Rose of Cairo, uh, Back to the Future, and then the two competing for best picture for me, uh, Ron and Brazil. Dead air. I was uh, holding my breath in on the microphone waiting for you to say that. So, so yeah, we talked about how much we love William Hurt, but obviously I haven't seen Kiss of the Spider Woman. Yeah. However, However, I have seen Brazil. Yes. And I want to give it to Jonathan Price. I'm fine with that. For Brazil. Absolutely. Do it. And then... I'm with you. As far as replacements for Best Director and Best Picture... It is Run and Akira Kurosawa 100% across the board. Yeah, I guess. It's I mean, such a cool looking movie. Brazil is also, Brazil's really also cool, cool but it's it's just it's Terry Gilliam being silly and gross. If you see the one silly and gross. with the right ending, because yes. one ending is fucking trash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, a, it's a real... Uh, the Hollywood hell, ending sucks. It's a real hell in the Pacific. I don't know if you're familiar with hell in the Pacific, uh, no. but it's... Same deal, though? Same deal, is there's two endings. Both are bad, but one is significantly better than the other one. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Ron for me. Oh, I, 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 Ron. Director Kurosawa for sure. For sure. But I like. Picture, for, I'm honestly very torn. I was surprised he was nominated. It's cool he was nominated. Yeah, I, I didn't... But, I mean, he's... I think they knew it was their last chance. Yeah. He's also, like, such an influential director on most, like, 
big time U- U.S. directors at that time. Did you know he made Star Wars? <laughs> he, he made Star Wars. Uh, he like he also um, made Seven. King Lear. But <laughs> not a lot of people know that Akira Kurosawa wrote King Lear. King Lear. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, he said like to like Spielberg and Francis Ford, and uh, I mean, I guess if you like uh, the Star Wars uh, movies, like us, big Star like Wars, like us, guys. big Star Wars guys, um, then uh, George Lucas. But yeah, he was such a big inspirational director to all of them. Yeah, that I they they must have realized like, oh, this guy's an important yeah. director in the history of movies. Let's give him a nomination. He can't win, but he let's give. Him something. Can't win for this. He does win an Oscar earlier than this for, for foreign language. Foreign film. language, yes. Um, but yeah, for me, it yeah, both hands down. Like I, Brazil is excellent, but Ron is like one of the greatest movies ever made. Ron's the first one I wrote down. So going with that, it's Ron. Now, if only those Jews in the eighties could have got it right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so 1984. Is the next year by and George Orwell? Did I write? I only wrote notes for this. I don't think I'm making any changes. I uh, no. yeah. The, I, fir- the first thing I wrote was Amadeus across the board. Yeah, I mean <laughs> Am- Amadeus won Best Picture. I agree. Milos Forman for director. I agree. F. Murray Abraham. I agree. Yeah. Tom Hulse also nominated. Tom Hulse, who is also the fattest man that's ever lived. Now good for him. Look at him. Oh, he's much fatter he's than super Amadeus. Fat. He's super fat. Um, so the only notes I really made were, again, cool movies. I wrote Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. I wrote The Natural. The Natural. Uh, and Dune. Mu- and Muppets Take Manhattan. <laughs> yeah. I wrote, yeah, I wrote Amadeus, Natural, Ghostbusters, Dune, Amadeus wins everything. <laughs> yeah. Pretty straightforward. It's, it's a good year. Uh, if you haven't seen Amadeus, watch it. It rules. It's great. Um, and then 1983, I made no notes. Uh, Terms of Endearments won Best Picture. It's very good. I'm not going to take director away from James L. Brooks because it's James L. Brooks. Uh, I was looking at maybe changing Best Actor, but like I haven't seen uh, the movie that was nominated. Like, Robert, Robert Duvall for Tender Mercies. But, I mean, Robert Duvall is a very good actor. Sure is. I think I've maybe seen Educating Rita, but Ma- I don't remember. Michael Ma- Caine. But Michael Caine is really good in everything going so, back i am uh, not not amazed but like surprised and happy albert finney has so many nominations yeah he really does and he's great he's, he's nominated great. here for the dresser the dresser is that the prequel to phantom thread oh could be he he's coming in dresses maybe someone fucks a dress in that one well then i'll like that one uh, did you make any changes? Did you make any notes? I don't even think I wrote down any i, I mean the the right stuff i like i wrote down two movies I think one of which I am changing Best Picture. Okay. I wrote down two movies. Those movies are Trading Places and The Big Chill. Okay. Two yeah. good movies. I think I'm giving yeah. The Big Chill Best Picture. And I think I'm giving uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's Tits Best Actress. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Ooh, look at that. Look at that name. Um, yeah, I, I didn't make any changes to that. I thought it was fine with Terms of Endearment. And yeah. When I have cancer, shut up. I mean, that's kind of the movie. Uh, so isn't that like a like? There's eight, eight of the same movie right around there in the mid '80s. There's there's what? There's Terms of Endearment. There is Steel Magnolias also cancer. And is Beaches also cancer? I don't. I don't think I, I haven't seen Beaches, and I don't remember what Terms of or I would. Uh, uh, the other one is. Believe me, I've seen some beaches. <laughs> I've not the good, not the right beach though. No, you haven't found Thick Hog Beach yet. No, or or non pig specific furry. Non, beach. <laughs> yeah, non pig specific. Um, so 1982. Um, I only wrote down notes. I didn't change anything. Uh, Gandhi and I will o- Gandhi won Best Picture. I will always be a fan of Richard Attenborough winning two Oscars. So yeah. not taking it away from John Hammond ever. <laughs> Al- also, Richard Attenborough a huge Chelsea supporter. So again, there you go. Can't take it away from him. Uh, the main um, thing I wrote Meryl Streep and Sophie's Choice is really good. Is is like an excellent for sure. Yeah, win as well. So uh, I wrote the big trans year. 
We oh, got uh, is Tootsie. It to- Tootsie. We got Victor Victoria. Uh, what are you doing, Tootsie? <laughs> we got Tootsie, Victor Victoria, and the world according to Garp. Yes. Triple trans That is true. And a good trans year. Pretty progressive, Pretty 1982. <laughs> I mean... Good thing we don't take... Two, it. two of them are literally just people... Are just transvestites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what... But... Uh, uh, transgender John Lithgow in uh, yep. World According to the Garp. Yep. Uh, Full on trans. Got is PPP choppy choppy. <laughs> uh, ET, obviously a big yep. one. Das Boot. Blade Runner. Uh, you, you haven't seen Das Boot re- recently. No? No. It's boring as fuck. I see. <laughs> Blade Runner. Blade Runner, yeah. Rocky 3. Rocky th- No, Rocky 3 is the bad one. It's got thunder lips. It's Mr. T. And Hulk Hogan. No, it's bad. <laughs> no, I know um, it's bad. The two that I wrote down were Poltergeist. I've got one other thing I wrote down that I want to talk about. And the other one that I wrote down is uh, Quest for Fire. It's I really it. in- it. really interesting to do a movie, like a two-hour movie, where there's no spoken language. It's just right. grunts. and gotcha. Also, there's one scene I will... It's a real 10,000 BC. Yes, I will never forget the one scene where it's right before the bad guy cavemen come. Yeah. And one of the like young guy, young good guy cavemen, like all the women are like down at the water, like doing something. And he just like nonchalantly like walks in, like goes over to the water, like just starts humping one of them, like, like just gets behind them, sure. like, like a couple quick thrusts. And then he yep. just sort of like, and she like doesn't react. Yep. And he just like goes back to whatever he was doing. Snakes and I was like, its course. man, dudes rock. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So those are the ones I wrote down, but so the, Oh, sorry. And the verdict, that verdict. I was going to say good. the big one I want to talk about that I have mentioned yet, which I think I'm giving, I think I'm giving picture and actor. Okay. Is the verdict. Because you're racist? And possibly director. Maybe I just want to take things away from Richard Attenborough for Gandhi. You but um, it was around here going back, and it was only reinforced as I kept going back through the 70s. I think I fucking love Sidney Lumet. Hmm? He has, like, bring up his shit. Computer, show me Sidney Lumet. He has so many fucking bangers I that I really love. No, I agree. He he's a really underappreciated uh, director. So he's got. Uh, Could probably skip know. the. Well, we're not, we, we'll talk about some of these. Yeah, like his first movie was Twelve Angry Men. Yeah. Uh, so going uh, backwards. Uh, so nineties, not much of anything. But uh, then I think Family Family Business. business. Is good, right? Okay. Yeah. And Running on Empty is fine. But then, and then the yeah, verdict. so like starting with the verdict, you got the verdict. The uh, <laughs> I didn't know he did the whiz. Equus, good one. Yeah. Network, Network, good one. Dog, Dog Day, Day Afternoon, afternoon good Murder, one. Murder, Murder on the Orient Express, Express, good one. Serpico, Serpico good one. Uh, yeah. I don't know any that's, of the... Uh, that's most of them, but like... I think the appointment's good, supposed to be really good. Okay. Um... But yeah, Long I, Day's Journey into Night. Yeah. Oh yeah. A uh, view from the bridge is supposed to be really good. Yeah. And then yeah, well. So yeah, like he like his seventies, eighties, and a bit of sixties, uh, really strong stuff. I like me some Sydney Lumet. Yes. And this is the this is the first year where there's two Sydneys. Pollock versus Lumet. Double Sydneys. Pollock who won the last year we just did, I think. Mm. Or for. He did something we recently just... Uh, maybe he won... Did he do Out of Africa? He did do Out of Africa. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. I like Sidney Pollock. As an actor and director. Uh, is that because he's in Michael Clayton, your favorite movie? I do like Michael Clayton. Yeah, that's your favorite movie. I don't know if it's my favorite movie. I don't know. You talked about it like you you loved it. <laughs> okay. Like you were gay for it. Uh, so you think you're changing them to... The verdict. The verdict? I love the verdict. Okay. I like the verdict too. I think it's yeah. really good. Um, 1981 is going to be a real motherfucker for me because there are, well, there's one, like, as much as I said, Aliens was one of my top five favorite movies, uh, this year has one of my top five favorite movies, probably my number three favorite movie of all time. uh, It does, but you're talking about the wrong movie. You're You're talking about the wrong 1981 movie. Am I? Yeah. You're, you, th- talk- you think you're talking about Raiders, Raiders of the Lost Ark, but you should be talking about An American, American Werewolf, Werewolf in London. London. <laughs> yes. Uh, one of the greatest TF scenes of all time. I mean, it's, it's my note. 
Yeah. It's my note, for sure. Good. Uh, so Chariots of Fire won Best Picture. It's actually a pretty good movie. It's a little pro-Jewish for me. It is very pro-Jewish. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you on that one. Um, but it is actually a pretty good movie. Um, but it's... It's this. It's the eighties, like boring British drama. Yeah, it just that just happens. To Raiders have of the running. Lost Ark is better than Chariots of Fire. Yeah, um, <laughs> for those keeping. Score. So yeah, obviously for me, best picture changes to Raiders of the Lost Ark, and best director changes to Steven Spielberg. Obviously. Yes, yeah, same for me. Yeah, um, but the rest all stay the same. I'm uh, giving actor from Henry Fonda in On Golden Pond to Dudley Moore for Arthur. I can't tell if you're being sarcastic or not. I'm not. All right. We don't like Dudley I'm Moore. I'm sorry, Arthur. I've only seen the remake of Arthur starring Russell Brand. You know the Brand. original's very good, right? <laughs> I'm more of a Russell Brand man than I know a, you're a, a Brand Dudley fan. Moore man. You're a real Brand head. Uh, and uh, brand head. <laughs> and uh Catherine Hepburn can keep best actress because uh, I guess it does take some some degree of bravery to uh, to run around a lake chasing geese with your head bobbling from Parkinson's so badly <laughs> that it almost falls off. That's a, I think that is actually kind of brave. Yeah, that's very brave. Um, okay, nineteen eighty is a bit is a big year. For, does it a lot, for a lot of good movies. Does it have TF, Scott, you're asking? Yes, it does. Altered States. Altered States, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I made a couple From notes. From man to caveman to d- monkey. Monkey guy. To goo. To goo. <laughs> oh, my goo. Uh, so Ordinary People won Best Picture. I haven't seen it. I. It is good. I it is should, not the best yeah, one. I should see it, but. It's good. Um, so I made a yeah. So I made a couple notes. Altered states, uh, obviously TF. Yeah. The Elephant Man, which yes. should have TF. <laughs> <laughs> if it the knew end what of it, the movie, if it knew what it was doing, the end of the movie should be him fully transforming into an, into elephant. an elephant and stomping everyone. To oh death. my God! Happy ending. Happy elephant man? ending. Elephant Man. Ah, oh, David Lynch, you fucked up. You fucking idiot. You idiot. Uh, and then the last one I I noted was. Uh, the the one that Kurosawa won best foreign language for, uh, Kagamusha. Yes, which I I think is good, but it also just kind of fits in with all of his other, yeah, other middle of the road movies. Yeah. But which I'm is glad, but, uh, but which I'm is glad. amazing for almost any other absolutely, director. Absolutely. So I, yeah. I mean, at least he won an Oscar. Yeah, they good did. For him. They did give him an honorary, an honorary. Oscar in like oh. Six, yeah, maybe. in the two thousands. Um, but yeah, for me, this. I, one... I I hope you have the correct picture director. Yeah, actor. of course. It, it's it's raging. It's fucking Bull raging. And Martin Scorsese. Yeah, it's 100%. obviously. Uh, it, to me, it's shocking that that wasn't the winner. It's. I'd say it's one of the biggest robs. Yeah. In Oscar. I history. mean, I, like obviously Robert Redford is like a big star, big sure. Hollywood star. He does make good movies. Yes, absolutely. But I don't know if that played into like, well, Robert Redford's handsome, and Martin Scorsese's he's a little tiny troll. <laughs> it could factor. And in. they're like, we got to go handsome over troll. <laughs> Fair enough. But yeah, this one it's for optics. me. This one for me. As soon as I realized that it like it was raging bull, slam was dunk like, raging. Not even questioning slam it. Slam dunk. Like, yeah, I'm not even going to read the rest of the category. Yeah. Uh, so next up is 1979. 79 is a real interesting year real, so, in that a very good movie, yeah. Kramer versus Kramer yeah. won best picture, but it, there's, but it's not the best movie a of the number year. Yeah. of better movies. So Kramer versus Kramer won best picture, best director, best actor. And I'm surprised. Surprisingly. Oh, best supporting. Uh, support. best supporting. P.S. What? She should be Leo. No, she's barely in it. I guess, I guess it's more she's about in the Hoffman. beginning and the very yeah. end. She's it's, not in the middle. Yeah, I guess it's mainly yeah. about Hoffman. Then um, so I made some notes for this one. This one has... Seven uh, a good fucking movie. Star yeah. Trek The Motion Picture. Yes. Uh, it's got The Muppet Movie. Yep. And it's got Being There. Yep. Which I like, but I don't think I could nominate for the big ones. I can. Peter Sellers, well, best he's, actor. He's done. nominated right I, No, I'm giving it to Peter All Sellers. Right. You, I don't know what you've got against Dustin Hoffman. What did he ever do to you or any woman ever that would lead you to take this away from him? I'll tell you what. Dustin Hoffman didn't play as good a retard as Peter Sellers did. <laughs> Is it because Peter Sellers played more of a close retard to what you are? That's correct. So you, you I found him, him more relatable. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I'll allow it. Thank you. Um, 
Listen. 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 Everybody listen. Ha ha. To me. There, okay. The other two worth talking about before the probably the big two to talk about yeah. are Manhattan. Manhattan. Mm. I haven't seen, but I own. One of Woody Allen's best movies. Not his best. That's coming in two years going backwards. Um, and Breaking Away is great. I, have I seen Breaking Away? I don't know if I've seen Breaking Away. Have I seen Breaking Away? I have but, not seen Breaking Away. It's really good. Well, I'll Jimmy Pardo's favorite movie. Jimmy Pardo. Not to be confused with... Not Don related to Don. <laughs> Stop asking. Which has been stuck in my head all day. So, <laughs> um, yeah. You're a complete <laughs> loser. Um, anyways... Yeah. Nassim Pedrad. <laughs> Musical guest. Huba Stang. Huba Stang. <laughs> and your host, John Travolta's <laughs> dead son. <laughs> Men's, Men's assholes Travolta. Travolta. <laughs> um yeah, I changed I changed I mean, listen. Kramer listen. Is Kramer, great movie. Francis Ford Coppola for Apocalypse Now, I think, is one of the biggest snubs of all time. I think you gotta Just do that. making that fucking movie. Yeah. How did he not quit making films? Everyone almost died. Everyone almost died. He had to deal with the most difficult actor in the history of acting. Just absolute piece of shit, it's Marlon total Brando. total piece of shit. Complete asshole. Constantly having to just adjust on the fly. Martin Sheen having a legitimate like, nervous breakdown that he filmed and is the first scene of the movie. Uh, nervous breakdown and heart attack. And heart attack. And heart Pardon attack. Pardon me. <laughs> yeah. Just bonkers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fran Franny Ford gets it yeah. for that. Uh, and Best for, Picture's a toughie. For me, I have it. Is it Alien? It is Alien. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alien is the... Uh, greatest horror movie ever made and is one of the greatest science fiction movies ever made. I can't not give it to Alien. I'm I'm fine giving it to Alien too as much as I like Apocalypse Now. Yeah. Apo I, I think seeing uh, one of the cuts... The two, Wait, which one? The Redux or... Redux. Redux, Redux 2 or... Fi Final Cut's good. Okay. Final Cut's good. It's a decent balance of everything. Redux is too long and nobody gives a fuck about those French people. No. Shut up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> shut your mouth. And Sh then ori mouth. original theatrical cut is good too because I don't think it has French people, period. Great. I think it completely cuts Great. it. Great. Yeah. Um, I think... Nope, lost my train of thought. What was I, where, where was I going with this? What was I saying? Alien. Who am I? Where am I? Alien French people. Uh, no, it was something alien related that is... Sigourney Weaver? Number one. Who do you think you are? <laughs> no, in that movie, like Sigourney Weaver... Are you Weaver, giving supporting actor to the xenomorph? I am. Okay. Um, the, the Sigourney Weaver in that movie is the skinniest woman you've ever seen. The scene where she like yeah. strips down and she weighs 16 pounds. She is negative 4% she is body fat. She's tiny. It's, yeah. uh, it's off-putting. Yes. <laughs> she also has itty-bitty titties, which I don't like. You know I like Jumbo Naturals. Absolutely. We, we, yeah, I, I'm more of a Jumbo Naturals man. Uh, no, I, Not a I, member I, of the itty-bitty titty community. I had something more important to say, but I forgot what it is. I'll hmm. come back to it when we get to 1964. I'll go, ah! Alien. That's the yeah. one. Um, yeah, so uh, Alien and Francis Ford, I think, have to be the two. Yeah, um, I'm with you on those. Uh, 1970... That's it, that's like if we were doing like full noms for that year, this is definitely one I would split like that because mm -hmm. both are so good. Yeah. Um, so 1978, uh, the winner was The Deer Hunter. I think for me, this was like a pretty obvious year. Keep it. The only thing I might change is I might go De Niro over Voight. For the Deer Hunter over Coming Home. I wrote De Niro. I but wrote Coming De Niro. Home is still very good, but yeah. it's kind of a similar movie. Yeah. And the Deer Hunter is a lot more, like, there's more In, stuff going on. It's more on. intense. And, it's, yeah. it's more of a, like, action y. It's not yeah. action but, like, Coming Home is more of a sad drama. Yeah. And this one's more of, like, an actual, like, mm -hmm. adventurous movie. So that one I might do. Um, yeah, I wrote Deer Hunter, De Niro, Streep. All Deer Hunter related. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, the only has, note has Michael Cimino, Deer Hunter director, like done much else of note. Uh, he did he did some stuff after, but he hasn't done. I think he's dead. You're, Good, you're dead. Um, yeah. So after, well, before he did Thunderbolt and Lightning. For uh, he did Magnum Silent Force. Running. He did Magnum Force, and he did Thunderbolt and Lightning. Then Heaven's or Gate. Like, uh, then Heaven's Gate, which and gets that's nominated. about uh, it for then... big stuff. His last movie, Sun Chaser, made twenty one thousand dollars. And is that Joey Pants? Oh, it's Woody Harrelson. Woody... Well, I'm, I'm looking at it. At okay, okay I'll, so it's, it's, like it's fine. Pants to me. <laughs> is he fucking dead? He's definitely fucking dead. Oh, he's fucking dead. 2016, but he we lost him. But he didn't do anything for a long ass time. He didn't do anything for the last 20 years of his life. Wow. He was tired. Maybe Leave he, him he made Deer Hunter. Maybe Leave him alone. he had Parkinson's. Um, the only note I made for this is uh, one of the, uh, like a super underrated movie that has the greatest soundtrack. Midnight Express. Midnight Express. Hell fucking yeah. Giorgio Marauder. Hell yeah. With The Chase. Yeah. That fucking song. But also that movie uh, is, is if you think about it as a real life thing, is fucking terrifying. Oh, getting... Getting busted with hash in a... In the 70s. In a Turkish in a prison. In a Turkish prison. Yeah. Where a Swedish man tries to fuck you. Yeah. And... But it, do, it does give us the scene that gives us the scene in the cable guy yes. where he goes oh billy oh billy yes. so I worth it got to love it absolutely worth it yeah and the only one other one i had worth mentioning was the boys from brazil because hitler <laughs> oh of course yeah. and Lawrence Olivier. yeah and a gregory peck as mengala yeah. Yeah. That's such a pretty pretty cool. Insane honestly. Insane cast. Pretty cool. <laughs> hey, I like it. Hey, you know all of you uh like really, really renowned, classically trained actors? Yeah. You guys want to play Nazis? You wanna be Nazis? Yeah, fuck it. You Let's know what? It. Yes I yeah. do. <laughs> yes I do. Um so nineteen seventy seven, is there anything to even talk about? Like uh, Annie Hall won Best Picture. Woody Allen won Best Director. Diane Keaton won Best Actress. Maybe Keep, the only keeping one, all of those. Maybe the only one is Woody Allen Best Actor is maybe the only change. He's nominated. Uh, but I also haven't Richard Dreyfuss for I haven't seen Close the good, Encounters. Yeah, I haven't seen the Goodbye Girl, yeah. so I don't know about Dreyfuss winning for that. Yeah, um, I made no notes. John Travolta for Saturday Night Fever. I thought you would stand harder for Close Encounters. No. No, I, 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 as much as you love Annie Hall, I love Annie Hall. Okay. I can't cool. argue with Annie Hall. It's the it's, best Woody Allen movie. It's the right win. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, I love it's it. It's so funny. It's one of, uh, one of my probably three favorite movies of the 70s. Mm. And depending on the day, number one. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's, uh, it's the most rewatchable of his movies. I think. Super rewatchable, yeah, yeah. I think it's the one where you can watch it again and you're like, you... you you're like, yeah, this is still funny. This is still entertaining. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. And I shout out to think... Equus. Hmm? Shout out to Equus. Oh, Equus. Shout out to that boy stabbing six horses in the eye with a sickle. Why not? I think... Uh... And obviously Star Wars, our favorite movie. Uh, yeah, eat my dick, Star Wars. Uh, there was one... I thought there was maybe one that I forgot to write down, but I guess not. Was it Airport 77? Uh, is not to be confused with Airport 78. Correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's it. I think it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's um, anyhow. And then 1976, I also wrote no notes because the right movies won. Rocky for Best Picture. Dis. Um, uh, well, agree. I mean, the right actor won, but... The, uh, I... I guess. Or, do you, you, or De Niro okay. for Taxi Driver. Uh, that's the problem. I'm fine with Faye Dunaway for Network Best Actress. Mm. Great. Mm. Do, go nuts. Yeah. Uh, so other movies I wrote down were... Yeah. Rocky, All the President's Men, uh, Silver Streak, because it has two awesome people in it. Mm -hmm. It's not the best movie. It's but not Blue Streak, but whatever. It's not Blue Streak. Uh, yeah, and then that leaves... Taxi Driver and Network. So Rocky actually doesn't factor in. That's for you. <laughs> it does for me. I know. Uh, t uh, taxi Driver and Scorsese, picture director. Yeah. I think I... Yeah, it has to be. Yeah. 
It's, oh, it's, also uh, Logan's Run, which Logan's is like Run. a good seventies uh, yep. sci-fi and seventies King Kong and seventies King Kong, which is actually pretty silly. Yeah, I believe Kong uh, full penetrates her in that movie. It That's, is the seventies. It's the seventies. Yeah, the the full bush penetration. The haze code was over. <laughs> Monkeys could <laughs> fuck women again. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, yeah, as far as favorite movies of the 70s, the other one that springs to mind is Taxi Driver for yeah. me. Over, look, don't get me wrong on Rocky. It's great. But Taxi Driver is the one for me. And I also fucking love Network. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, the best actor is tough between Peter... If Peter Finch hadn't died right then, <laughs> if Peter Finch had done another movie... <laughs> and it's really hard because two of the, the, both those roles have like really iconic like moments yes. in them that have lasted the test of time. When you see yeah. like a, a highlight package they're both in on there. the Oscars or something. Mad as hell mad and you're talking to me. And you're talking to me. Yeah. Like it's two of the most iconic things Absolutely, ever. yeah. yeah. And, I mean, and, the, and the thing with, but like also too, Rocky has maybe the most course. iconic music of all time. Sure. Like you hear the first three notes and you're like, oh, that's Rocky. You yeah. know it's Rocky. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I guess I've given De Niro. Oh, but De Niro's so fucking good in Taxi Driver. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm even. I'm giving it to De Niro. I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. It. I'm sorry, yeah. dead ass Peter Finch. Sorry, dead guy who died right at the time of the movie and alive at the time. William Holden, who was also nominated for Best Actor for Network, <laughs> alive at the time. <laughs> alive at the time. Of course, he was alive at the time. <laughs> I don't know. Peter Finch wasn't alive at the time. <laughs> That's true. That is true. <laughs> Network's a killer, and you know what? Uh, uh. Does Beatrice Strait keep supporting for Network, or do I give it to little child prostitute Jodie Foster for Taxi Driver? <laughs> little child prostitute <laughs> is the greatest thing that's ever come out of your mouth. <laughs> hey, little you know what, fucking, uh, child prostitute. Harvey Keitel gets a uh, supporting actor for being her pimp, too. Yeah, that's you know what? Perfectly cast pimp. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Keitel always rocks. So yeah, so there's that. A lot of Taxi Driver. A lot of as taxi much as I love Network and as much as I love Rocky. Sorry guys. Sorry guys. Scott's Scott's ruining your day. Yep. Uh, Nineteen seventy five is gonna be the day I murder myself and Scott. Strong. Is this your tie? Two. No. no. Oh. Two of my favorite movies. Yes. And, uh, and like not only of the seventies but of all time. And I can't argue with actor actress. Those are those are to me are the right choice. Jack Nicholson keeps Cuckoo's Nest. You, and Louise Fletcher keeps you know, Cuckoo's you're Nest. Taking, yeah. Take away from Nurse no, Ratchet. I'm not. I'm you not taking away from Nurse Ratchet. Yeah. But man, picture and director are making me it's want to invert super, my penis. I know. And also, not not only that, but you have Kubrick, Fellini, and Robert Altman. Yeah. All making movies. And, and my and my boy Sidney Lumet. And Sidney Lumet. For granted, I haven't seen the Fellini movie, but I the other three obviously. I haven't either. Um, however, so yeah, so one flew over the cuckoo's nest, one best picture. Yeah. And best director, but fucking Jaws is the same fucking year. And if if Jurassic Park is my number one favorite movie of all time, Jaws is my number two favorite movie like of the all time. Best Picture is fucking tough. I actually haven't and I haven't seen Nashville, wh- really which too, I should. But there's a lot of music in it. However, yeah. there is an assassination attempt at the end, okay. and that rules. But like the other four for Best Picture: Cuckoo's Nest, Barry Lyndon, Dog, Dog Day, Day Afternoon, Afternoon, Jaws, all fucking fantastic. Yeah, all so good. Uh, yeah. This is you a could, really, really tough year. I could make a case. It'd be a stretch, but those four are all close to top ten for the 70s. Yeah. All four of those. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. De- definitely top 20, like no question. No question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so good. First of all, good job, 1975. 1975. I actually don't know what I'm going Scott to do. Born. I don't think that's true. Oh, okay. Yeah, for me, hands down, fucking Jaws. I mean, and and Spielberg director. Spielberg director. Okay. Uh, ja- Jaws is the perfect serial killer movie. Yes. Because you only see the killer three times in the movie. Yeah. That's it. 
Yeah. And the rest of it Chomp. is nothing but terror. Chompa, chompa, chompa. Chompa, chompa, chompa. <laughs> you gotta get Bruce the shark. Uh, and, yeah, and just also, like, the the amount of, like, shit that happened with, yeah. like, malfunctioning sharks. Fucking shark sucks. Fucking shark sucks. <laughs> God damn it. Fuck it. We'll do the fucking thing live. But, yeah. It's, then, the, then they used a real shark. And then they just threw... They found uh, they a just, giant shark. They just threw uh, Robert Shaw in the water yep. and said, fucking swim out. If it gets it, it gets you. But yeah, for me, Jaws, Spielberg, not not for me, this, not even a question. I I respect your conviction. Gotcha. I, I mean, have to do a split because there's so much good stuff. Sure, that is fair, and that's your favorite thing to do. That's your finishing maneuver. It's the coward's way out, as we're calling it. <laughs> well, you are nothing if not a coward. That is correct. I can see the yellow on your back from here. <laughs> it's orange. Eh, you bastard. You, you've been in the sun too long. <laughs> Spielberg director. Okay. Yes. Picture. DDA. Cuckoo's Nest. Dog Day. Jaws. Barry Lyndon. Ah, uh, that's fucking tough. You, I mean, you can't be mad at them for picking Cuckoo's no. Nest. And, and also, Michael Douglas has won a number of I'm Oscars. Sorry. I'm sorry, who? Michael, gay actor Michael Douglas, Thank pardon you. me. Thank gay you. actor Michael Douglas has won a number of Oscars for producing Producer. best pictures. Yeah, and, and things, like several. Yeah, things you don't think about. Like, would you have expected that a fairly young Michael Douglas yeah. produced well, Cuckoo's Nest? Look who his fucking dad is. He I, yeah, came I, from money I and heard, notoriety. Yeah, I did hear that his dad was famous. I'm not familiar with yeah. him, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> List of awards nominations received by Michael Douglas. Yeah, There's show me literally. Some... Uh oh! You you lied. You're a liar. I am a liar. He's. I guess it was one. I guess it was just Cuckoo's Nest. Nominations, like nominations, but not wins. I think just wins. I think nominations, but not wins. You coward! You fucking coward! Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Hansen, coward. (laughs) So I guess I got to pick a best picture from 1975, even though there's so many fucking good movies. Um, you know who's handsome? Ryan gay, O'Neill. Gay actor Michael Douglas. Ryan O'Neill's fucking handsome in Barry oh. Lyndon. Okay, yeah. So you D- don't say okay. So you're going Barry Lyndon? Because no, of a I'm just man? noting that he was no. handsome. <laughs> um, you're not a fan of neck beard Richard Dreyfus and Jaws. <laughs> he has his own charm. He's very for skinny. Sure. <laughs> he's very. He's a. He's a. He's a. That's true. He's an otter. <laughs> He is. I'm between Cuckoo's Nest and Dog Day. Okay. Want to give the edge to Dog Day because of the gay aspect? And it's a dog in the title. <laughs> and there's a dog in the title. Um, and I love Sidney Lumet, as previously stated. Yep. Uh, dog Day. <laughs> that was... that, okay, that's actually a good split. Dog Day Best Picture, Jaws Best Director, Cuckoo's Nest Best Actor and Actress. Yep. That's fair. I, I like it. Fair's fair. I like it. Even though Carol Kane and Hester Street, very good. Underrated. Although, again, a little pro-Jewish for me. <laughs> uh, 1974. Uh, so, The Godfather Part 2 won for yep. Picture, Director, and Supporting Actor, and that's it. Um, so, I made a lot of notes for this one. I, there's some stuff in this one, for sure. So, a couple good ones that don't get enough attention are uh, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Uh, yep. Very, very, very solid. Um, early Scorsese. Early Scorsese. Uh, although he had one two years previous. I didn't say first Scorsese. Okay. Okay. I said early. Uh, then, this was the year of uh, of 70s big budget disaster movies. Yes. You got The Towering, Towering Inferno. Inferno. You got Earthquake. Yep. Both good. Both fun. Uh, I love uh, practical set piece stuff where yes. buildings collapse and there's yeah. sliding around. Which they literally and... like still have at Universal Studios yeah. on the tour yep. there. Absolutely. Uh, then the other one I wrote was Murder on the Orient Express. Yep. Uh, is that it? Oh, you mean the, the, the new one with Kenneth Branagh? Yeah. 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 Uh, the one where he definitely um, looks the way Poirot is supposed to look? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Handsome with a tiny mustache? Yeah. Or I guess if you think Kenneth Branagh is handsome. Tall, like... Not that I'm saying Kenneth Branagh is handsome, but... Tall, lean, yeah. Yeah. Uh, And then the other one is The Conversation. Yes. For Coppola. Surprised Um, no nomination for Hackman. For Hackman, yeah. 
Hack man. Hack man. Um, yeah, I guess maybe they just don't give a fuck about him. Yeah. Um, now, is it funny that the only Fred Astaire movie I've ever seen is The Towering Inferno? That's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't exactly make movies S- for me. Singing in the Rain, get out of here. Get I'm out a of Towering here. Inferno. Towering man. Inferno, I'm all about it. Really showcases what Fred Astaire's about. <laughs> Uh, Does he tap dance on top of the building? <laughs> he tap dances as the building's going down. Excellent. He's like the the, the band on the Titanic. Okay, but that he's makes on sense. top of the building as it's going down, <laughs> and he's on fire. He's on fire. Yeah, he's absolutely on fire. So, uh, for me, uh, I, so I didn't. I have not seen uh, Harry and Tonto. Although I am to understand, Tonto is a cat. It is uh, an old man driving cross country with his cat, mm. which in another year. Art Carney, I'm happy to give it to you. But <laughs> not gonna lie, I don't even think, think I've seen anything Art Carney's ever done. I mean, he's I know a, the name. Yeah, it's he's mainly comedy. He's mainly gay. I don't know if he's mainly oh, is he, gay. Is he a secret gay? <laughs> Hard to say. It's a fun game to play. We should play it again uh, sometime. Uh, films. Okay. Have I? Oh, it doesn't even doesn't even give me. Ah, oh, he's is he's in Last Action Hero, so I've seen one. <laughs> Great. Oh, and Muppets Take Manhattan. I've seen two. Yeah, I, th- I feel and like he... Firestar. I've seen all of his late work. I feel like he mainly did TV. Uh, you know. Never, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah his, his television section is about 40 times longer than his movie section on Wikipedia. Uh, he was on the Star Wars Holly Christmas Show. Uh, yeah, I... I don't watch a lot of. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I didn't watch a lot of '60s and '70s television, Scott. Yeah, like he did like panel shows and talk shows and sketch shows. Uh, was he on Hollywood Squares? I'm sure he's been on Hollywood Squares. Was he on Match Game? Match gonna... Game '76. He could have been on Match, Match Game '78. <laughs> One of them. One of them certainly. Yeah. So yeah, so, so any other year you'd be fine the, giving it to an old man. You're an old man driving around with his cat, but However, probably not in a year where you have Nicholson for Chinatown and Pacino for The Godfather Part Two. Correct. Right. Correct. Yeah. Um, I I think Nicholson for Chinatown. Uh, I think it's one of his best roles. Yeah. And it's re- uh, really just shocking that he didn't win. But I guess uh, the Academy likes cats, as they should. Which I'm not mad at. But what they, if Jack Nicholson I mean, played they did, a cat? They didn't like cats enough in 2019. Oh, if Jack Nicholson played a cat? Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> Current Jack Nicholson. Fine. Like 86-year-old Jack Nicholson as a cat. He can play Old Deuteronomy in Cats 2022. That you're directing? Absolutely. Okay. I'm doing it right. Yeah. Uh, so you, Surgery. You're, you're, you're between Pacino and Nicholson for that? I think Nicholson. You think Nicholson? Yeah, I think yeah. so too. Now. And then you got, yeah, as far as other movies... I yeah. mean, Chinatown's in the conversation for sure. Maybe all the... Uh, and you know what is in the conversation? The conversation. The conversation. Um, uh, Woman Under the Influence. Haven't talked about any Cassavetes yet. That's nope. a good one. Uh, and then the other one, which I kind of want to give best picture, is Blazing Saddles. Uh, Scott, I got some bad news for you. This is my tie. Oh. And my tie... Tell me it's Blazing Saddles in Chinatown. No. <laughs> my tie is between for, so for best director yeah is Mel Brooks for Blazing Saddles yeah and Mel Brooks for Young Frankenstein <laughs> is Young Frankenstein nominated yeah oh fuck me Scott do, that, you, do your homework that changes fucking everything do your motherfucking homework okay I gotta, I'm just gonna have to go bam <laughs> oh I'm on the wrong page <laughs> oh boy guys I'm sorry guys, guys and dolls I'm on the wrong page I, did I fucking miss it? It is there for adapted screenplay. So okay, so this changes everything because now uh, we can have this conversation where we both have a tie well, for best director <laughs> and best picture. Now let's have a conversation about my three favorite movies of the 1970s because they are Annie Hall, Taxi Driver, and Young Frankenstein. I put best picture Young Frankenstein and Blazing Saddles, and best director Mel Brooks for both of them. <laughs> I'm going to let you have Mel Brooks for both of them. Oh. You have to pick a best picture. For me, it is Young Frankenstein. Who who the fuck are you to tell me what I have to do? Are you the Academy? I'm the goddamn Lone Ranger is who I am. All right. I'm I'm off the podcast. Drew has left the podcast. (laughs) 
Oh, I, I, <laughs> I don't like you putting me in this uh, I know. predicament. I can't. I am. I mean, it is. It is pronounced Frankenstein. Frankenstein. I can't believe I missed it. You dumb bastard. I can't believe I saw one Mel Brooks and not the other. And you were like, I kind of want to give it to Blazing Saddles. And then yeah, as soon as I said like, Young Frankenstein, you're like, Young Frankenstein. Oh, yes, Young Frankenstein. <laughs> which I like even slightly better How? than... The thing, Blazing Saddles is awesome, but I feel like comedically it is front-loaded. Because yes. I remember I remember having a bunch of people... Yeah. Uh, uh, Brits were over yeah. uh, to watch it. And like the first third, like jokes per minute is fucking off the charts. <laughs> and then obviously the rest is good. Yeah. But it does not maintain the comedic pace of the first third. Yeah. It's... Don't get you're me right, wrong. You're right, you're right. It's awesome. Yeah. And Mongo punches a horse. And also a guy on camera says the N-word. You just don't get to hear it. <laughs> That's true. The sheriff is a bell. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, sorry, r- real quick thing. Up. How amazing is it that they make the callback to that in Robin Hood Men in Tights? Yes. When he makes Dave Chappelle the sheriff and he goes, a black sheriff? And then he goes, eh, worked in Blazing <laughs> Saddles. <laughs> yeah, just straight up fourth <laughs> straight wall. Up fourth wall. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mel Brooks, best director for everything, which, uh, sorry, Francis Ford Coppola and <laughs> Roman Polanski, both pretty fucking oh, good ones. Oh, the best guy. I, I mean, I had Polanski tentatively written down oh, before... You forgot that. Uh, before Mr. Frankenstein, uh, entered Frankenstein. the arena. All right, Scott, I'll go, I'll make my choice. And it is? It's young Frankenstein. Fair enough. It's so good. However... How did he make both in however, one year? However... However, However. in the case of young Frankenstein dying while holding the crown, Blazing Saddles gets to take its place. It's a real (laughs) Miss Universe. Sure. Blazing Saddles is ready to take up the scepter. Yes. Um, But yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. It it is, the, the, the comedy is stretched across... Uh, the yeah. whole film where you're right yeah Blazing Saddles does start to peak at a certain point yeah. um, but yeah same movie like, to me in my head both of them aren't the same year they're it's cra- like, it's crazy in that my the head they're a couple years apart in my head Frankenstein is earlier me too in my head yeah. Frankenstein is like 1969 okay. and Blazing Saddles yeah. is 74 yeah. but they're both 74 yeah. it's fucking crazy crazy um man I can't believe you forgot your favorite movie. I can't movie. believe I ate the whole thing. I can't believe I finished. Um, okay. So, so now on to 1973. Uh, the winner for Best Picture was The Sting. I think The Sting's good, but maybe not Best Picture. That's There's a couple fair. I, I like this thing good. a lot. I like this thing a lot too, but I had no idea there was a fucking sequel to it. <laughs> Me too. With like yeah. nobody. Nobody. It's like Jackie Gleason yeah. is the guy, right? It's, yeah. Yeah. What, what, a d- what a dumb movie to make a sequel to. Very strange. <laughs> um, so did I write any notes? I wrote some notes. Okay. Um, I wrote under, a few things. Underappreciated yeah. uh, is American Graffiti. Yep. Um, it's I think it's my mom's one of my mom's favorite movies. Okay. Um, then you got uh, she loves George Lucas. Her her favorite movie. <laughs> her favorite movie is American Graffiti. Her second favorite movie is Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Yes, Phantom Menace. Yes. Uh, so I also wrote down Serpico. Uh, I, I think P- Pacino Serpico maybe winner. I read from uh, this thing. Excuse me. It's I, Jack no, I, I, Lemmon look, in a look, movie look, that look, has look, Tiger look, look. Shut up, in shut up, title? shut up, shut up, shut up. Look, if I had seen Jack Lemmon in Save I the Tiger, I, and by the way, I don't know why I haven't. I like Jack Lemmon, and I like the title of I the movie. Although I looked at the po- here's the thing. Tigers. I looked at the poster, I'm like, I don't see a fucking tiger. I don't think it has anything to do with it. It seems like bullshit. I bet you his, like, military nickname was The Tiger. It's gonna be something... Like, were you looking for a cast member named the tiger? <laughs> uh, Daisy Tiger. As Tiger, tiger Petitioner. Petition. I don't mm. know what that means. We'll look into it. Yeah. Um, anyway, yes. I haven't seen it. But, uh, and I also haven't seen Last Tango in Paris for Marlon Brando. Oh. The, but this seems... You, sir, are missing out on a boring movie that has one great rape scene. Yeah. Yeah, I'm aware of the rape. <laughs> so... I, uh, 
for the, I like that part. For those of you not familiar with Last Tango in Paris, yeah, it is when in the se- in the early seventies when Brando was uh, getting a reputation for being a pain in the ass to work with. Also fat. Also kind of fat. Yeah, he was getting yeah. fat. He decided to go to Europe for a while. Yeah. And he just made a couple movies in Europe while he was there. Yeah. This one. Uh, with with Bernardo Bertolucci. Bernardo Bertolucci. And during one scene with a, <laughs> a fine young woman who I don't even know the actress's name. Uh, who, who's our, uh, who's the victim? Uh, Maria, Maria Schneider. Schneider. Who is... A French actress who's fucking dead. Damn. Died young too. Um, <laughs> I like that there's even a section that says post, post last, last tango. tango. Things she did after the rape. Uh, oh yeah, I've, I've seen so the, the passenger. It's she a, did some bits okay. and pieces. She yeah, she did some random stuff. But, but uh, her life might have gone differently had she not been raped. So in Last Tango, the in Paris. story goes <laughs> is that Bertolucci and um, Brando didn't want her to. They wanted a realistic, real uh, reaction from her being attempted raped by Brando. Yes. And so what they did. So was, they did it. <laughs> they didn't tell her, and Brando straight up tried to simulate raping her. Yes. Right down to uh, taking a handful of butter and smearing it in her butt crack. Yeah. As he was pretending to fuck her in the ass. Mm-hmm. But they didn't tell her. Yeah. So pretty much they just straight up so sexually assaulted her. Pretty chill On move. camera. 1972. <laughs> Good job. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at her... Uh, Sorry, 1973. Filmography and like it's all French it's stuff. It's French stuff. Or, or yeah, like one other thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so... That's uh, that's the last tango. Sorry, Maria. Sorry, Maria. Sorry about your damn butt. Um, yeah, so I wrote Bang the Drum Slowly because it's a movie I've always wanted to watch, mm-hmm. but I've never gotten around to watching it. And, and shout out to the movie that created multiple generations of furries in this great nation that you are listening to that is robin hood robin fucking hood. robin the, fucking hood the it, kids listening uh your zootopia was our robin hood, was our robin, hood. <laughs> uh, robin hood uh women want to fuck him men want to be him and also and fuck also him. fuck him <laughs> Uh, I think no, it wouldn't have been on the podcast. I don't. I don't know why it would have come up on a stream on Sunday, but a lot of things come up on streams. Um, Robin Hood related. I always, obviously, made Marion a hot objectively, but I had. I didn't care. This is revealing <laughs> way too way much. too much about me. I didn't care for her costuming <laughs> because. <laughs> Because it's not Lola Bunny and Space Well, Jam. it's not, but I d- because she sort of wears that veil type thing yeah, yeah. that covers her ears, and I want to see ah, her nice pointy ears. Some awesome pointy ears. Because the the veil obscures the foxiness of it. Right. Right. It's too human. It, exactly. Yeah. You, you get see you yeah you get what I'm talking yeah. about. Show me them ears. Show me them ears. And you know what? Show me them paws. Give Show those, me give those pads. I would love to see some be- some beautiful beans on the undersides of There's those fingers. So much porn of it, Scott. You will, <laughs> you will never. There's you will so, never be if disappointed. If you spent the rest of your life looking for it, you you'll, wouldn't find all of it. You'll never be disappointed, Scott. If that's your fetish, if your fetish is 1973 Robin Hood porn, you're set for life. You are set you're just for this one. lifetime and, <laughs> and whatever <the> afterlife <laughs> you believe in. You will never stop getting it wet. <laughs> yeah, this this movie just transformed little kids that had no idea that they wanted to be a a husky or a a red fox or an Indian tiger or a Mongolian snow leopard. Better kind of tiger. No, there's only one kind. (laughs) 
Uh, also, oh, uh, Prince John, voiced by Peter Ustinov, by a Academy Award winner. Yep, and uh, nobody else. Of any... Don Bluth we... as the Elephant Guards. I don't know. Interesting. And Chris Candido did. Wait, did Don Bluth do the animation? I didn't really. Oh yeah, he did used to work for Disney, didn't he? Before he did his own shit. Sure. Huh. Uh, directed by a dirty German. Yep. Uh, but yeah, so shout out to the movie that transformed a generation. Yep. Uh, but unfortunately, can't. It's not winning? Question mark. I, no, I guess not. But it's very important. So it's the most important movie of the year. It is the most important movie of anyone's life. So yeah, I wrote down. Yeah, I wrote down Pacino for Serpico. Yeah. I got, um, I got a couple. One for obviously I didn't see the Paper Chase. I did not either. Um, so for supporting supporting actor uh, is Dustin Hoffman for Papillon. Papillon. Yeah. And then I put actor Steve McQueen question mark for Papillon. Maybe. But here's why. Okay. I like Papillon a lot as a movie. I think it's yes. really unique and cool. You prefer the remake? I mean, the remake was fine. Um, I don't know how much of a good actor Steve McQueen is. I, I don't feel know. Like he's handsome. He's funny. Yeah. He's handsome. <laughs> but is he a good actor? I think he's a fine actor. I don't think he's like a great Oscar caliber actor, yeah. but he he's got everything else going yeah. for him, so he gets away with it. He's he's a movie star. Like is Ryan Gosling the best actor? Or is he just a pretty good actor who's, who's so, so handsome? So handsome, yeah. <laughs> right, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely the same thing. So, P.S. In in this podcast, I've given Ryan Gosling seventeen Oscars. Uh, everything you could give him for, you gave him. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't I don't know that, but I, I think Pacino for Serpico for me, yeah, is probably the winner. What do you think about uh, Daddy Daughter Ryan and Tatum O'Neill Paper Moon? They they fuck in the movie, right? Probably. Okay. Uh, didn't see it. Youngest Oscar winner at the, at the time, time, I think. Because uh, Anna Paquin hasn't won yet. Anna Paquin or... Wait. Quavengine just got nominated. nominated. Didn't, didn't she was, she's the youngest nominee. Nom- youngest nominee, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so you're, you're going Sir, uh, Pacino for Serpico as yes. well. Yes. Uh, actress who gives a shit, uh, but I will say Ellen Burstyn I'm, I'm going and the Exorcist. Burst Burstyn and Exorcist. Um, and then, yeah, d- best picture, best director for me are both The Exorcist and William Friedkin. I, I think, think it's, it's one of the coolest. Yeah, I think I think movies. the The Exorcist edges out this thing for me. Edging, I like it. Yeah, uh, and also the The Exorcist is maybe the most um, trying to duplicate it but never quite getting the formula down movie of all time. Yes. People have been trying to recreate The Exorcist For 50 since it years. came out yeah. and have never been able to do it. Yeah. I do kind of want to watch at some point The Exorcist 3 because my understanding is The Exorcist 2 sucks. Exorcist 2 has nothing to do with like being... It's like science and they're trying to figure out how the children get possessed and they're like right they got hel- helmets on with tubes and they ha- they get I do well, they like get tubes. older linda blair to come and like help them figure out how the demons are possessed did she take her top off no okay but then three goes back to batshit crazy yeah there's that's one, what i heard i, I heard one, three's like legit good one of the er, probably one of the earliest and scariest jump scares okay uh in a, in a horror movie of all time huh probably um, it also has a, a very young uh, Brad Dourif yep. as like a part of the, the evil people, the bad okay. people. Very good. Uh, so nineteen and uh, let's see, uh, yeah, nineteen seventy two. Yep. Uh, so the winner was The Godfather, um, and I'm gonna keep The Godfather. I recently watched it. And good for the you. First time ever, and I'm gonna keep it. Did it tur- did it turn out it was good? Turns out. <laughs> turns out. Pretty good movie. Okay. Good, um, good to know. Now, director, I'm absolutely not giving it to a fucking musical. For Bob Fosse yeah. for Cabaret. So Get the Fra- fuck out of Francis here. Francis Ford Coppola for Coppola. The Godfather. It's retarded that he didn't win. He yeah. didn't win. The other thing, though, I will give a shout out to was... Uh, oh. 
What? I only I have two other movies written down. What the fuck? Oh, um, really, really good. Like I don't know anybody that's seen it. Is a Robert Altman movie called Images that was nominated this year, and like fuck that movie rules. Like I like a good Altman. I don't really want to like no spoilers, but yeah. it's like. Oh, uh, uh, I think she's a uh, uh, children's writer for books okay. who has some kind of mental breakdown and goes to this um, like cottage in the outskirts that she has. But it's this way that it's edited. It's taking place at two timelines at the same time. Okay. But you don't really know that until something hap- like things happen. Okay. But like uh, the way that it's edited together – is incredible like it's nice. so, completely blown away by how good it was cool uh so yeah shout out for altman who's like the more i see his movies the more he becomes one of my favorite yeah directors. why isn't he can, I, I mean he's considered a great director he's considered a great director but yeah he doesn't get talked about as much now as other greats like no. it's not like i guess like because he kind of trailed off at a yeah certain point. like his last like movie steven was spielberg is still making movies yeah his last movie was 94 90s. 93s. No, no, he did Gosford Park. Oh, yeah, he did Gosford Park. 2001. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I, yeah, so I made some notes, too. I mean, I The Candidate is a movie I've always wanted to watch, but I've never seen. I have not seen it. It's uh, Robert Redford, and where the fuck is it? It's somewhere... Uh, quick, Scott, point it out to me on uh, the giant screen I in front of you. don't see any acting right, nominations right for it. Screenplay. Uh, one for one for screenplay, original yeah. screenplay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he, 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 it's <laughs> it's kind of an earlier version of that um, uh, John Stewart movie that came out last year, uh, Irresistible. Rosewater. Rosewater. Um, where, it, but it's it's like I think it's like pretty pretty good, and I've always wanted to see it, but I've never seen it. Yeah. Uh, the two I wrote down to go along with Godfather, even though I think Godfather wins everything. <laughs> yeah. uh, squeal like a pig. Deliverance. <laughs> and uh, got a mouth. And Sleuth. I see. This is going to be a shameful admittance. I've yeah. only seen the 2006 remake of it, oh. where Michael Caine is, is in the, the Oli- older Lawrence Olivier. Yes, Michael Caine's in the Lawrence Olivier role, yeah. and Jude Law is in right. the Michael Caine role. I haven't seen that one. I've never seen the original, and I think that one very was good. okay, but yeah. this one's way better. Obviously. It's really yeah. I've always wanted to see it, and again, I've never gotten around to see it. Um, Huh. Yeah. Shout out to James Caan for getting nominated for The Godfather. And Robert Duvall and Al Pacino, oh, all yeah. nominated for supporting D- actor Duvall for and Pacino, I understand, but like, yeah. I didn't realize James Caan would get Jimmy. Jimmy. Our boy Jimmy. Uh, yeah, uh, Kane and Olivier both nominated for Best Actor for Sleuth. Oh, yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, Peter O'Toole, man, good year. And then whoever the fuck Paul Winfield is. I've for, heard the name. Sounder. I don't know the movie, though. Uh, but yeah, that's it. For, I, like, I didn't... Just Francis Ford for Best Director. And, you know. Godfather, Best Picture. Yeah. It's it's those things. Yeah, yeah Brando. Uh, and, well, you got to keep Brando for Best Actor, because yeah. then otherwise he doesn't send a woman dressed as a Indian. No, I think it was a real Indian. It wasn't. Wasn't it really? No, it was just some, like d- Italian? some dumb hippie bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love him. He's Even the, better. He's the greatest. Yeah. Um, so, 1971, uh, The French Connection won Best Picture. Not changing it. William Friedkin won for Best Director, not changing it. Yeah, that's... A, it's Gene Hackman for it, not changing it. Like, yeah. all those are the right decisions. Very, very hard to change any of those, yeah. even However, though A Clockwork Orange is pretty a fucking Clockwork sick. A Clockwork Orange is pretty fucking sick. There's also some uh, some good rapiness in that. Absolutely. So, let's put them in the new Space Jam. <laughs> that's true. Uh, the only other note I made, well, two notes. Is one, I have two I've, notes. I've always wanted to see Clute, and I don't know why I haven't. I haven't seen it. I've, I've really always wanted to see it. And the other one is, shout out to, uh, speaking of rape, uh, Straw Dogs. Straw Dogs. That is one of the two things I wrote down. I wrote down Straw Dogs, and I wrote down Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Be- no. I'm not look- a fan. Really? I've never been a fan of it. Interesting. I don't know why. I couldn't explain. I saw it a lot as a kid. Interesting. For I also reason, saw it a lot as a kid because I liked it. Although I couldn't reason, watch the scary tunnel scene because a chicken gets his head cut off and I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it huh. is. I don't like it. I Wilder just ne- I just is... I've never liked it. Wilder is so good in it. Mm-hmm. He's great. 
Can I give it to him over Gene Hackman for French Connection? Probably not. Yeah, I, but uh, he like he's my very close number two. I'm very disappointed that a lemon party wasn't happening in that bed. <laughs> Maybe that's my problem with it. That Is his that, four grandparents <laughs> are just are just having an orgy the whole time, and that at least one of them Some is faking. <laughs> yeah. Maybe all four. Maybe all four of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, but you see, so you're keeping French Connection and. Hard not to. Yeah. I mean, but, uh, I, the other one that I think is McCabe and Mrs. Miller is really good. Yeah. Um, I think that's kind of... Uh, I, again, I've also always wanted to see The Last Picture Show, but I've yeah. never yeah, seen, I haven't seen it. it um, I guess there's a lot of 70s movies I need to watch when we're done watching everything else we have to watch. And also every TV show you you and I both don't watch because we have no time. Correct. Uh, I almost... No, you're not doing it. I almost want to split it with Clockwork Orange. No, like, give Kubrick. You're, you're a liar. You're Kubrick, a phony and a liar. Cooper can't have director? No. Well, you know what? Fair enough. <laughs> you put your foot down. Um, yeah, so 1970. We discussed this off air. So, Patton won picture, director, and actor. But if you look at the rest of the movies nominated, it's a real, real, it's a real by default. That's I mean five easy pieces is good. Uh, the only thing I put that I think is better is Robert Altman for Mash. Yes, I I think Mash is a morph as a is a, a way better and more entertaining movie than Patton. Yeah, and I think that the only thing about Patton is that it's a it's an acting role that's really good in a really boring movie. Yeah, like George C. Scott as Patton is really good. The movie itself is super fucking boring. It's a war movie that's not even about uh-huh. the visuals of war. No. It's, it's about, about a general guy. who's a crotchety old man who's yeah, angry who's, that, who's his, a bastard. that his daughter got stolen and put into porn. Yeah. And now he's got to go find her. <laughs> man, hardcore rules. Not, not a lot of people know that uh, Patton and hardcore are a shared universe. <laughs> yeah. It's the George C. Scott extended universe. <laughs> So yeah, Mash and Robert Altman for me win because their Mash is a yeah. better movie than Patton. Yeah, I might go. And, and, the, and the thing is, I'd never seen Mash. I had only seen the TV show. You'd only seen After Mash. After yeah, After Mash, the one with Jamie Foxx. <laughs> yes. Um, so I didn't realize that Mash the movie wasn't as over the top funny. It's different. It's a lot more dramatic, but yeah. there is comedy yes. to it. Whereas uh, the the show obviously is a little bit hokey yeah. over the top comedy, uh, except for except when, towards the except end, except where Alan Alda like <laughs> cries like for the last ten episodes of the series <laughs> because it's traumatic war and he's got post traumatic stress disorder. It's like he just remembered it was a show about war. Yeah, he just remembered that they were there and he goes, "Oh, my friends are dead." It was a baby. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a lot for 1970. I've got... Uh, airport, but not to be confused with Airport 77 or no. 78. Correct. <laughs> you got Patton, Five Easy Pieces, MASH, and Tora, Tora, Tora. Mainly seen. because Tora is Japanese for Tiger. Ah, I've never seen Tora, Tora, Tora. I haven't either. <laughs> uh, I've seen Scrooge, but I, it's a musical. Not to so. be confused with Scrooged. Scrooge, duh. Different. Duh. But yeah, no majorly strong opinions for uh, 1960s. I might just give MASH everything because I think it's better than Patton. Yeah. Uh, okay, 1969, best winner, best picture was Midnight Cowboy. Not, I'm not changing anything here. Midnight Cowboy wins picture director and John Wayne wins for Rooster Cogburn for True Grit. I'm not going to change any of them. As much as I love True Grit. Hoffman or Voight for Midnight Cowboy? No, John Wayne. John Wayne for True Grit. Newman or Redford for Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. That's the only note I made was Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Yeah. If it wasn't for Midnight Cowboy and True Grit, I, I would give that nominations. But yeah. Yeah. What do I have? I have yeah, Midnight Cowboy, Butch Cassidy, True Grit, Easy Rider, and Z. I love that Easy Rider is one of my dad's favorite movies. Yeah. But I don't think he remembers that the end is gay. that people riding the bikes. <laughs> they, they, they think that the cowboys riding the bikes are fags. Yes. So I don't <laughs> think my dad remembers that. Probably not. I think he just thinks Harleys. 
I saw motor. You, I'm a simple man. I see motorcycles. It's my favorite movie. Yeah. Vroom, 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 yeah. Vroom, vroom, vroom. And maybe he only saw some weird cut where they don't show them getting run off the road and killed for being gay. But yeah. Not actually gay. Um, <laughs> Where, yeah, so, like, they, they turn the, the Betamax tape off before that happens so that he didn't get to see it. <laughs> but shout out to Midnight Cowboy, the first and only X-rated Best Picture winner. Yep. Which would, it would just be an R now. Yeah. yeah. But at the but time, at the time they were prudes and they didn't like things. Yeah. Uh, so 1968 obviously has a huge, three huge emission, three fucking bangers in 68. Uh, uh, number be, one, number one, three bangers in 68, Oliver. none of which are nominated for yeah. best picture. Uh, fuck you, Oliver. Fuck you, Oliver. Um, God, it won picture and director. The, yeah. And the director was a, no, oh, no, not a woman, man named Carol. He's got I was a like, girl's name. I was like, "There's no way, uh, <laughs> there's no way a woman won Best Director in the '60s." No, and also the only woman to win a direct Best Catherine Director Bigelow. was Catherine Bigelow yeah. until last year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there, there's there's three. A couple notes I made: uh, Planet of the Apes, uh, Rosemary's Baby. That's one of the three. And uh, Bullet with Stephen Queen. I forgot to write down Bullet, but it's cool that it was nominated. Yeah. Stephen Queen. Rocks. <laughs> now, the other ones I have, I don't know if you do I feel have, like do you have any other notes. I have three important movies but, written but down. Notes, no other notes. Notes that aren't Zero other notes. Okay. Three movies. So, I have no other notes. So, for me, uh, for actor, uh, no, this was the guy. Cliff Robertson. Who the fuck is Cliff Who Robertson? Who the fuck is Cliff Robertson for the movie Charlie? 60s, and then, like, he was random bullshit roles in movies that no one's seen. Oh, he's Uncle Ben. Oh, he's Uncle Ben. In the Tobey Maguire spider man There you go. Huh. In one, two, three, and Into the Spider-Verse. Good for him. Archival and Into the Spider-Verse, because oh, I'm pretty sure he's of dead. The Outer Limits. Ooh. But, like, yeah, like, who the fuck is this guy? And he he's, won a fucking Oscar. He's fucking Uncle Ben. A Best Actor Oscar. Best Actor for Uncle Ben. Uh, but yeah, so I am gonna I'm gonna leave it up to you, uh huh, to tell me if I should give it to Jack Lemon or Walter Matthau for the uh. other couple. Unless you're gonna let me have an unprecedented second tie. No, <laughs> I'm not. So am I going Lemon or am I going Matthau? I don't know. Who do I like more? Are you going wilder for the producers? I am not. Okay. I might be. Um, the three important movies are Rosemary's Baby, The Producers, and 2001, 2001 Space, Space Odyssey. Odyssey. Of course. Yeah. I think Kubrick gets director. Kubrick gets director, and I think for me, I'm going to give 2001 Best Picture. I think so. As as much as I like the producers, and honestly, Rosemary's Baby is fucking yep. good too. Yep. And po- I think I'd have Polanski a very close second director. Yep. Yep. Not even nominated. Not bullshit. Even, not even nominated because they um, knew what he was going to do in the future. I guess they knew. Way to go, Hollywood! Always on the right side of history. <laughs> <laughs> and picture. I guess it's hard not to do two thousand one. Yep. So I guess I would, as th- even though this is really a year I would like to split, and I fucking love the producers too. But I guess 2001 gets picture and director. Uh, but yeah, t- t- flip a coin with Lemon and Mathau for for your actor. I guess if you if you really don't want to keep Cliff Robertson, <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ben. Uh, uh, I mean, Jack Lemon is in my. Do you Americans. like the clean one or the sloppy one? <laughs> I like my fellow Americans and Jack <laughs> Lemons in my fellow Americans. So uh, congratulations, Jack. You, you've you won for the odd couple. You did it. It's bullshit that the taking of Pelham 1, 2, 3 didn't get nominated for anything because that's a Mathau that's win right there. Very good Mathau And movie. maybe a Jerry Stiller supporting. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Or R- a Robert Shaw supporting. R.I.P. R- 
All right. Yeah, here. Robert Shaw for sure. Oh, why didn't I give Robert Shaw supporting actor for? Because you're an asshole. <laughs> <sighs> it's fine. I'm not doing supporting for everything. Uh, this one for the uh, one thing I noticed on this was uh, an earlier Alan Arkin movie. Yeah. I didn't, I, I've I didn't heard of the realize. movie. I haven't seen yeah. it. The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. Um, so you're doing 2001, 2001, uh, Stanley Kubrick. And then you're doing... Gene Wilder. Uh, he's a supporting actor. Oh, loser. he is. So I guess he wins supporting. Uh, who's the lead? Zero Mostel? Or is there? Or are they just both Maybe supporting? Maybe they just have no leader. I guess they're just both supporting. No uh, in that case... Um, May I interest you in Jack Lemmon? Could I... <laughs> Have you tried Jack Lemon on for size? Have you tried Walter Matthau on for size? Um, yeah, I can go Lemon on that. Yeah, Jackie boy. Um, nineteen sixty-seven. The winner was in the heat of the night. I, I'm gonna keep it. I think the graduate's um, really good. Uh, I thought you would go Cool Hand Luke. I really do like Cool Hand, yeah. but the I don't know something about the performances in. in I mean, he's nice, great. Night I would, I, really, really I think solid. I'm going to keep it myself. The only note I made I love was that cool Doctor Doolittle nominated for Best Picture, but it's not Doolittle. <laughs> no, I know, but even the original one is kind of silly. And it's not the Adventures of Doctor Doolittle. Is that what it was supposed to be called? Uh, the Voyage. The Voyage. I of think. Doctor yeah. Mm. Uh, I've never seen Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, but I imagine it's good. Uh, it's... How How about? Uh, Sydney Poitier not getting nominated well, for In the Heat of the Night or Guess Who's Coming you know to Dinner. Why. I mean, he won the Oscar <laughs> previous to four this. years earlier yeah. than this. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. there's no excuse. Rod, Rod it's crazy. Steiger, Rod Steiger as the police chief winning is kind of silly. Yeah. Um, but, I, hey man. I would go Newman. I would go, I would probably go Newman. Yeah. yeah. Or Hoffman and the Graduate. Yeah. And, and and for me also like maybe Anne Bancroft and the Graduate, but only because I haven't seen who's coming to dinner. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. Man, I th- Catherine Hepburn and Audrey Hepburn. In Ooh, the same a era. rare yeah. Uh, f- yeah. Oh yeah. I had Wait Until Dark written down. Um, because my mom always tells a story about seeing it in the theater with my dad. And there's sort of a jump scare type thing uh, where my dad literally jumped out of his seat. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And your and your mom did. Your mom was fine. She was okay. I think she. I'm sure she was also startled, <laughs> but yeah. not to the extent my dad was. Did he scream? I think there was <gasps> a. No- I think there was a noise. <laughs> yeah. How embarrassing for your father. Terribly embarrassing. So. Uh, what else do we get? I got a lot of, I got a fair amount of stuff written now for 67. So we got, uh, the Dirty Dozen. you got your Dirty Dozen, you got your Cool Hand Luke, you got your Wait Until Dark, you've got both Poitier movies, you got The Graduate, and you've also got, uh, The Jungle Book. Yeah. And you've also got, if you're a, uh, Czech New Wave guy, Closely Watched Trains. Ah, right there. Yeah. Winner for Best Foreign. Best Foreign. Foreign. Which I had in my head was Milos Forman, but it's not. It's a different English only USA, <laughs> America first, Texas first. Sometimes Texas <laughs> first. Sometimes Texas before America. Yeah. It's an I before E situation. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so changes? No. Yes. No. Uh, yeah. I'm uh, Heat of the Night is fine as yeah. Best Picture. And then you're gonna and... go with Hoffman or Newman. Newman actor. Newman, yeah, I, I'm going to go Newman yeah. as well. I'm going to go Anne Bancroft for the graduate. And are you going? Uh, are you taking the uh, best director actor from Mike Nichols for the graduate and, and giving it to Norman Jewison <laughs> for In the Heat of the Night? No, I'm not. Okay, are you keeping it with the graduate? I'm going to keep it with the graduate. Yeah, that's fair. Graduate's a good movie, and, yeah. and I'm going to pull a Scott and split it. Split um because uh, I'm uh, I'm turning into a coward. A coward. Uh, 1966. Uh, the winner of Best Picture was A Man for All Season. Haven't seen it. Haven't seen it. Probably won't see it. I have seen Alfie and it's good. I have not seen a single movie oh. nominated for 1966. I've seen two. And the... both are good. Okay. I've seen Alfie and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Gotcha. Because I like plays turned, turned into, into movies. movies. <laughs> 
I when see. it's when especially when the plays are just people arguing <laughs> <laughs> when there isn't any action yeah it's just arguments yeah because there there's two like that in this range there's who's afraid of virginia wolf and what's the other one cat on a hot tin roof no the fiddler on the roof it's not fiddler on the roof tap dancing on the roof you're not helping it's fred astaire tap dancing on top of the terror inferno <laughs> I don't know if I'm Pull thinking back. of The Lost Weekend or if I'm thinking of something else. I think I'm thinking of something else. Maybe we'll hit it. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe you'll Oh, yeah, but it's... Uh, uh, uh. That's the salesman. Uh, God damn it. I'm, I'm sure I have it written down, but uh, God damn if I can... I, it's right... It's right there, and I'm so mad. <laughs> but death of a salesman. It's not death Glenn of a salesman. Glengarry Glen Gay. <laughs> Damn it! What's the other one with just people arguing and being drunk? Fuck! It'll it'll. Uh, uh, I th- we literally said it earlier, <laughs> and it's not coming to me. I don't know. I, 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 my my mind. It is might gone. be an early Sydney Lumet. Actually, it is. It's it's Sydney Lumet. What is it? 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 Look it up, Andrew. No. Look it up. Not being your stat Look boy it up, anymore. Andrew. Look it up. Not being stat Look boy. Look it up, Andrew. Look it up. I will unplug your Look microphone. Look it up, Andrew. Look it up. I will unplug Look your it up, Andrew. <laughs> Look it up. Look it up, Andrew. Look it up. Look it up, Andrew. Look it up. How long can you keep Look this up? Look it up, Andrew. <laughs> Look it up. Look it up, Andrew. <laughs> What if I look it up and just don't? <laughs> then I'll kill myself. Oh, I know. On I air, know isn't your stupid? For not I know. What You're so stupid. Fuck is it for not remembering? I have a it. brain injury. Leave me alone. No, you're so dumb for not remembering it. I know. I'm not arguing with you. What is it? It's Sydney Lumet, early '60s. Twelve angry. It's not twelve men. angry men. Yes. No, it's not. It is. It's not. That's what we discussed. It. It's no. Stagecoach. There, no. Uh, I don't know that kind of woman. No. Uh, God damn I'll you. you! From the bridge. No. Uh, the pawnbroker. Fuck. Failsafe. The hill. The group. The deadly affair. Keep bye going. bye Braverman. The seagull. No. The appointment. No. The last of the mobile hotspots. That's uh, <laughs> it's hot shots. But I spot. <laughs> the Anderson tapes. Child's play. Serpico. Murder on the Orient Express. What? Maybe it's not. Dog Sydney Day Lumet. Afternoon. Maybe. Network. It, no, you're 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 past it. You're past if you, at least chronologically you're past it. The verdict. <sighs> what the Daniel. F- no. It's, Barbara it, Dogs. It's it's over. Power. It's over. The morning after. I'm so mad. Running on empty. Family no, business. It's not. <laughs> God damn it! Isn't it fun to be annoyed by somebody doing something <laughs> stupid? Yeah, it is. This is gonna. I, that's this, why I would never do it to anyone. This podcast is gonna end in divorce. <laughs> God damn, I'm pissed off. It'll it, it'll come. Well, maybe don't be so retarded. I mean, that's the dream. Um, I don't have a lot written for 1966. I have good. We're moving on. I have Alfie. I have Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. So like, uh, Dick and Liz can both win for that. And uh, Born Free because it has kitty cats in it. Although they're <laughs> lions and they're the worst kitty cat. They are the dumbest. Uh, all right, 1965. The winner was The Sound of Music. Uh, I don't think I had seen very many other movies other than Doctor Zhivago. And Sound of Music is better than Doctor Zhivago. You got your. You got your Sound of Music. You got your Dr. Zhivago. You got your Spy Who Came In From The Cold, I'm Richard it. Burton. I'm it. Possibly best actor. Probably back-to-back best actors for uh, Virginia Woolf and Spy Who Came In From The Cold. Uh, you got your West New Pussycat, early Woody Allen. First Woody Allen, I think. Yeah. I think. Never seen it. It's good. And Thunderball. <laughs> Thunderball. Uh, 1964. The winner of Best Picture was My Fair Lady, who gives a shit. This was... I'll tell you who gives a shit. Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> that is true. Because um, without Rex Harrison in this, we don't have Stewie. So, the there, options... There's one answer. Or... There's one answer for a lot of it. Uh, best actor is uh, dual role Peter Sellers. 
do it. Like at least triple. Triple roll. Yeah. So yeah. triple roll. Triple roll. Peter. The Sellers. president. The general. And the doctor. Doctor Strangelove. Yeah. Yeah. I guess those three. Yeah. Three. I forgot that his name was President Merkin Muffley. That's adorable. Fake pubes and, and toilet paper in your butt. Like a muffler. No, muff. Fake pubes, real pubes. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Peter Sellers, Dr. Strangelove. Stanley Kubrick, Dr. Strangelove. 100%. And best picture, Dr. Strangelove. Mm, I or, think... Or... Or... I was going to say, I think my favorite movie of the 1960s ah. is Dr. Strangelove. Or... Sorry. Oh, now I see what you're doing. <laughs> I'm with you now. <laughs> Give me half an hour and I'll get there every time. Yeah. Or how I learned to stop worrying and love the bomb. There you go. I was trying to set you up, you dumb bastard. I know. I'm, uh, look, I'm still working you're on that, uh, that. I'm lovely. But I'm still working on that other thing that's really <laughs> pissing me <laughs> off and I hope doesn't ruin the rest of yeah, the podcast. I hope it does. Um, okay. 1963. Uh, the winner was Tom Jones, obviously. Who the fuck's seen Tom Jones? Um, you love Tom no. Jones. I love Tom Jones the singer sometimes when you only play one song of his at a diner. When he sings the song from 1964's What's New Pussycat? What's New Pussycat? Uh, I, so, yeah, again, same thing. I haven't really seen a ton. I mean, I've seen Cleopatra. I've seen How the West Was Won. How about uh, How the West Was Fun, eight, starring eight. the Olsen twins? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw, I've seen Eight and a Half. Uh, but that's about it. I've I wanted to see HUD, but I've never seen HUD. Uh, the I have. So... <laughs> I, I, here's what I got for 1963. Eight and a half. The end. Uh, fair. Um, Oto Imezzo. Oto Imezzo. Yeah, and you haven't seen a. It's a mad, 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 mad world. I haven't, but uh, should. No, I also haven't seen it. So, uh, the only other thing I wrote down is. That maybe uh, by default, but also because it's really well done, is um, Alfred Hitchcock for director for the birds. Yeah, I mean he did a good job with those birds. Those birds, some were real, <laughs> some were fake. <laughs> he threw them at Tippy Hedren's head really hard. Right, look, Beak first, like any, <laughs> <laughs> like darts, like darts at the top of her scalp, <laughs> and like you'd think in the future she's gonna have a lot more trauma with animals so she should be used to it i was gonna say it turns out as far as her career goes uh birds was the least of her problems with, <laughs> with, it, with movies with animals yes uh so 1962 uh lawrence of Arabia won <laughs> and gregory peck for to kill a mockingbird and i didn't change anything i made two notes is mutiny on the bounty is really good but it's really fucking long just like lawrence of arabia yep and uh hatari with john wayne which is one of my favorite non-western john wayne movies yeah uh, it goes goes to big game hunting in africa with hilarious uh <laughs> sci uh, uh, national geographic stock footage for the animals <laughs> very nice um yeah lawrence of arabia to kill a mockingbird the miracle worker and of course lolita oh yes of course lolita who doesn't like uh underage girls wasn't there a remake with like ray F no Jeremy i think Irons? there was a Jeremy remake Irons or ray fines or yeah in like the 90s, 90s? yeah sounds right i'm gonna use my phone uh yeah any, anything else changed on your end or you just it's not not important enough to oh I, also the longest day is really good but again also way too fucking long david lean can keep best director for lawrence of arabia yeah. because it's epic but i like to kill a mockingbird okay. better okay so okay. it gets best picture uh 1997 it is jeremy irons and dominique swain and Melanie Griffith what and Franklin What happened to Dominique Swain? And it's directed by someone. Some fucking who probably guy. Probably neither of us have seen a movie by. Nope, that's not true. I've seen one movie. He Good did job. Foxes. He did Flash Dance. Nine and a half weeks, and then he did Fatal Attraction. Okay. Jacob's Ladder. Indecent Proposal, Lolita, and Unfaithful. And he has. Man, has he made? 
any movie that's not very centrally about fucking, fucking or <laughs> assault. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't made a movie since two thousand two, but yeah. he's got a movie coming out in oh. two thousand twenty-two. Hell yeah! Is it about fucking? Uh, it's called Deep Water. I don't know. I like I like oh, the deep part. I like the Uh-oh. premise of Uh-oh. this movie, and it's got a pretty good cast. Whoa! Uh, the movie is a well-to-do husband who allows his wife to have affairs in order to avoid a divorce becomes a prime suspect in the disappearance of her lovers. So okay, it's right up his alley. Yep. Uh, ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Uh, Anna de Armas. You know who she is? She's hot. Yep. Uh, Rachel. Oh, she, she like uh, knives out, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Rachel Blanchard. Can I call her the knives out, bitch? <laughs> yeah. Rachel Blanchard of TV's Clueless fame. Oh. Lil Rel. <laughs> okay. Uh, Finn Wittrick of uh, American Horror Story. Oh, one of Ryan Murphy's boys. One of his boys, and I assume it's just Gone Girl Two. Okay. It's kind of Gone Girl Two, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, for a second, I forgot we were recording a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> were, were you like? I was just like getting into it. I'm like, oh and, yeah, I guess I should move this. Along. And like half half a block away from your microphone. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm assuming you have no other notes for six two. Uh no. No. Uh so sixty one. The winner was West Side Story. Suck my ass. <laughs> uh. So uh, I made one note, which is uh, Yojimbo. Yeah. Or Kurosawa gets nominated. Six, 61 I, is all about Yojimbo versus The Hustler. Yeah. I mean, it, Yojimbo is uh, is good, uh, but I, I went with The Hustler. I think The Hustler is a really good movie. Yeah. Um, and Judgment at Nuremberg. And Judgment at Nuremberg as well. Uh, but yeah, I, I think The Hustler is a really, really good movie. Hustler's great. Yeah, really good movie. So I would give that best picture. Shout out to Jackie Gleason as a Minnesota Fats. <laughs> uh, not a stretch. No, but he. <laughs> but his pants. The role, <laughs> the role he was yeah. born to play. Um, 1960. Big omissions for me. For the like, number one, uh, fucking Spartacus. Yeah. Not nominated for best picture. Not nominated for best director, which is a fucking ridiculous. That's crazy. And yeah. Fucking Psycho doesn't get best picture. No. He gets best director, but doesn't get best picture. Yeah, very dumb. Um, There's a real. I've, I got a real strong five for uh, for 1960. Yeah. I've never seen The Apartment, but it's on my watch list. Uh-huh. But I've never seen it. It's really good. And The Alamo, which is one of my favorite John Wayne movies, uh, did get nominated, but I'm not gonna be. I'm not going to be a, a Homer who picks his favorite movie over uh, better movies. Because there yeah, are two better movies. I don't know if you heard, but John Wayne got canceled. John Wayne. Retroactively Casey. seven John years Wayne ago. Bought it. <laughs> a lot of good John Waynes out there. John Waynes. Always good. John Wayne, the third best John Wayne? I think so. Behind Gacy I, I and Bobbitt? I can't put him above... I can't in good conscience put him above Gacy or Bobbitt. You can't put him above murdering Clown Man and getting your pee-pee chopped off and then appearing on Wrestling to Save a Man from getting his pee-pee chopped off. Correct. Yeah. And, oh, and also making porn. And making porn. Making porn with his chopped, reattached pee-pee. <laughs> Great. Also, she didn't go to jail, did she? No. L- Loretta Bobbitt? Is that her name? Lorena. Lorena Bobbitt. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little before our time, wasn't it? Wasn't it like... I think it was 90s. No, this was early, early 90s? Somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah maybe early 90s. Yeah, so because, because it was on... It's in Weird Al's headline news. Ah, yes. Which was 1994. Yes. So it was early 90s. Yes. So it was before your time. <laughs> yes, well before my time. I Yeah, it was uh, but a mere uh, glimmer in my father's eye at the time. <laughs> Gross. While he was getting scared by Wait Until Dark. Gross. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, because the big the big news of 1994, or I guess 1993, and then the song came out in 94 was Bobbitt, uh, Tanya Harding, yeah, and uh, Singapore Cane Kid. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the big uh, three. They spanked his ass so hard. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So do you, do you have other notes? I mean, other movies. My I got my big my big five. Yeah. Big five are Magnificent Seven, Spartacus, Psycho, Inherit the Wind, and The Apartment. Uh, I think. I have to give uh, best actor to uh, father of gay actor Michael Douglas, Kirk Douglas for Spartacus. Not even nominated. Not even nominated. 
Um, Man, Spartacus didn't get shit. Shit. Didn't get fucking shit. Damn. So I'm kind of... I'm going to take the Scott Coward route. Hell yeah. I'm going to split it. But I don't know what the split is. Gotcha. So it's either Spartacus yeah. and Hitchcock uh-huh. or Psycho and Kubrick. Right. I don't know which one. I think That's... I like Spartacus as a movie better. It might be Spartacus Hitchcock. And Hitchcock's direction because he kind of created yeah, new things. Exactly. Again. So I think it's going to go Spartacus Hitchcock. I think that's right. And, like, actors tough, actually. May I remind I'm, you that Kirk Douglas lived to 103 <laughs> years old. Actor, I'm really torn between three. And his son is gay, and his other son <laughs> is dead. <laughs> All good points. Um, but, yeah, between Kirk Douglas Spartacus, Jack Lemmon, The Apartment, and Spencer Tracy, Inherit the Wind all fucking good have you seen the hair of the wind i have not it's really good you know what it's about i have not it's about the secret gay spencer tracy no it's about the uh the scopes monkey trial oh yeah for teaching evolution in the 20s interesting it's really good and and because they play fake real people because like spencer tracy plays a fake um uh not the other one is william jennings bryan clarence darrow he plays Clarence Darrow, and uh, I can't remember who the other guy is that play Frederick March. Is it Frederick March? Yeah, as his friend and rival, Matthew Harrison Brady. Yeah, and, and quote, quote unquote, Matthew Harrison Brady is William Jennings Bryan. Like, they're mm-hmm. fictionalized versions of real people. Gotcha. Because, yeah, this isn't technic. because, yeah, because no one's called Scopes in this either, so it's not... It's not the real thing, but it's the the thing with fake names. Right. So they could do a little more with it. And yeah, it's a, it's sort of a parable for uh, McCarthyism and like the Red Scare in the 50s, mm-hmm. uh, like juxtaposed with the 20s right. Scopes trial. Uh, are you reading that it was remade for television three separate times? I want to see the remake with Jason Robards and Kirk Douglas Douglas in 1988. Or Jack Lemmon and George C. Scott in In 1999. Like, all of these people are too old for the years they're made in. All of these people are nominated for Oscars now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And are in In their early 60s. (laughs) That's interesting. That's very interesting. I would like, I'm going to, I mean, you know what? I'm going to watch all four of them. Do it. Uh, Probably not. Watch the movie. I'll watch the movie. The movie's great. What one of, like, one of the few. Like Jack Lemon. I know. I mean, Jack Lemon's great. One of the few like movies we watched in school for education mm-hmm. that I really liked. Okay. Um. But anyways. so yeah. So you were discussing actor. I was, and I'm still very torn. Um. I almost want to go Spencer Tracy. Yeah, I am. In fact, how do you like that? And then for, you're looking up if he's a secret gay. No, I think he was a drunk womanizer. I, I think be- that's the. I opposite. believe you're right. Those I are the two you're options. You're either a secret gay or a drunk womanizer. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure he was a drunk womanizer. And you know what? More power to him. And then he definitely. Uh... He died a heart attack, but because... Railed Catherine Hepburn. Yeah. (laughs) Just fucking took her to pound town. Um, And I closed the thing I needed, so that's good. Good. Um, Yeah, so you're going to give it to Spencer Tracy, and then what are you going to do for a picture and director? I think I'm doing your same picture director, Spartacus Hitchcock. Spartacus and Hitchcock. Yeah. Um, So then we get to... 1959 best picture was Ben Hur. Uh, I I didn't for me it wasn't enough to change anything like fuck it Ben Ben Hur is a, a an insane movie I'm too a, long but it's like a big blockbustery Hollywood movie of that time so I'm a North by Northwest man I mean I'll, yeah North by Northwest is really good I but I'm going North by Northwest and shout out for everything um be, be, be. picture director. Yeah, actor Man, Jack Lemmon again. He's nominated every fucking year. Every year. Every year. Yeah, it's crazy. 
Um, yeah, shout out to Some Like It Hot for uh, trans Jack Lemon and trans to- Tony Curtis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Respect to both of them. Um, it, I, Heston can probably keep Ben Hur, I guess, for yeah. best actor. I'm gonna look up. One, or maybe I don't know. I don't mind giving it to Jack Lemon. He had eight nominations. I would have said more, honestly. It seems like it's every year. And, and only one for way. the 1960s uh, and 70s. 60, 61, 63, 74, 80, 81, 83. What the heck? Fuck happened from 63 to 74? He should have been on a hot streak. Uh, he was doing comedies, and they don't really get nominated. Right? Yeah, that's true. A lot of the earlier stuff was uh, was serious acting roles or like handsome young gentleman yeah and then he did a bunch of silly stuff um <clears throat> have you ever seen the clip from the golden globes in the 90s when ving rames wins and refuses to accept it and makes jack lemon come up on stage to give him the golden globe yes yeah yeah that's a that's a rad video that is pretty <laughs> rad absolutely um, so yeah any, anything else for this i mean um, no, really. uh, main North by Northwest okay. was my big thing. We're getting to a point where most yeah. years I don't have a lot more than one yeah, movie written. Me, me neither. Uh, so 1958. Uh, I have one movie written. Uh, GG won Best Picture that no one's ever fucking seen. Uh, however, for me, it's The Defiant Ones. Uh, it is It is great. Uh, Tony Curtis, City Poitier, handcuffed yeah. together, escaping the law. It's a really, really good movie. Yep, it, um, it is really good, but it's not Vertigo. Well, and then I wrote Best Actor is uh, Jimmy, Stewart Jimmy Stewart for uh, for Vertigo. And probably Best Actor is Kim Novak. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, I mean, I guess by default, Best Director, again, is Alfred Hitchcock. I think I'm going to call Because if, yeah, if I, I think haven't I'm seen any, you know... Across the board, Vertigo yeah. on this for me. Yeah. Uh, and then... Man, we are just uh, total fucking... Film film fags who are just giving everything to Alfred Hitchcock. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm two in a row right now. Over secret gays, uh, not so secret. Uh, 1957 is the Bridge Over the River Kwai, which is wrong, wrong. Uh oh. Twelve goddamn. It's Angry Twelve Angry Men, right? Might be the best movie I've ever seen. Wow. Well, for something that's a, a play. About yeah. guys in a in a room. Oh no, it it's awesome. Also, it's awesome, and it's my pick too. Also, dudes rock. Also, dudes but rock. But the fact you took a play that's yeah. supposed to be a play, yeah. and still made it such a gripping piece of film. Yeah, filming it. Ah, oh, to me, it's maybe one of the greatest movies ever. It maybe the greatest movie ever made. I did not know you were that I love strong on it. it. So much. I've also seen the made for TV one that's in the nineties. Mm. That's got Gandolfini. I haven't seen it's that. It's got Tony Danza and it's got Jack Lemon playing the same role ah. as the movie. Cool. And there's also uh, Twelve Angry Men Inside Amy Schumer, which is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Yes. If you have not seen Twelve Angry Men Inside Amy Schumer from Inside Amy Schumer, it is hilarious. P.S. Don't worry. We also hate Amy Schumer. Oh, yeah. But this is brilliant. She's a bitch. <laughs> but it's She's great. a goddamn bitch. Yeah. But this is fucking brilliant. Yeah. It is a full... It's a full episode sketch. Yeah. It's the whole episode. Yeah. And it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, Twelve Angry Men, Best Picture. Sidney Lumet, Best Director. And Jack Lemmon, Best Actor. <laughs> Yes. I'm not... Agree. I'm not going to hear anything else. Nope. That, I'm yeah. 100% fine. Uh, 1956, I wrote nothing. Uh, best picture was Around the World in 80 Days, but there just wasn't enough other things I had seen to make an argument. Uh, 56 is The Seven Samurai. What? So, heads up on that. Well, I guess we're both idiots <laughs> for not realizing that movies... Oh, I could have done the entire eight hours of War and Peace. <laughs> you could. Or seven hours of War and Peace. Uh, where, where, am I, where am I looking, madam? Oh, right there. Motherfucker. Well, Art direction. I'm... Seven good, Samurai. <laughs> much, much like you, I'm going to apologize to myself <laughs> yeah. and put Seven Samurai. Yeah, that's why, that's why there's two of us. That's what this is for. The, seven Samurai is my young Frankenstein. 
in that it's your in, in, in your top three movies of no. the 1970s in that, in that i didn't realize it was yes, there yes, yes. Yeah. and i feel stupid <laughs> yeah seven samurai wins picture director uh shout out to Yul Brynner for The King and I and The Ten Commandments in yep. the same year. Man, Pretty fucking those good. Those are big, uh, big, massive productions. Yeah, he had a busy, uh, I guess, busy 1955 yeah. Yeah. for these to come out in 56. Uh, I might... Um, oh, Anthony Quinn and Anthony... Per- oh, none of these are movies I've seen. Robert oh, Stack. Hell Stack. yeah. Um, yeah, I might go Mafune for actor. Yep. Because if I'm going to nominate a, a Seven Samurai for everything else, <laughs> sure, I should probably do him. Yep. Um, and that's, that's that. <laughs> and that's 1956. <laughs> that's that. Um, Nin- 1955 is my first year with nothing written. Okay, I only have... Oh, for, sorry, 50, 55? 55. Yeah, I got nothing written for 55. Um, what what one? 55 was Marty, which I know is good. It's Ernest Borgnine. I like Ernest Borgnine. Yeah, but I, I know yeah. it's good. It uh, won picture, director, actor. Yeah. And uh, people seem to like it. Did for actors? It did not, because dudes rule. Dudes yeah. rock. And a uh, supporting actor win for our boy Jack Lemmon for a movie I haven't seen. Uh, yeah, as is tradition. <laughs> Uh, the 1954. Got a, uh, two, is, two big ones for 54. Is on, on the Waterfront, which I don't think I've seen. I've seen it, and Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando wins, but Jim, Jimmy Stewart's in the conversation for a Rear Window. Yeah, I, I wrote, I wrote, uh, Rear Window, Best Picture, Alfred Hitchcock, Best Director, and Jimmy Stewart, Best Actor. Because yeah. it was one of the only movies I've seen from 1954. Yeah. Uh, I think Rear Window, Rear Window for Picture Director, and I'll let Brando keep Actor. Even though Jimmy Stewart's great. Yes. Um, then and, next- and Grace Kelly for... Grace Kelly can keep uh, Best Actress. I, um, I'm realizing that... Uh, we're only talking about actors and not actresses for the most part. And I it's mean, it's really hard. It's here's the it's thing. It's not even just us being chauvinist pig. Here's the thing: because we, we are chauvinist pig. We started in '89 and went backwards. Women did not matter in Hollywood until 2019. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not our fault. You're not wrong. Uh, so uh, 1953, the winner was From Here to Eternity. With Montgomery Cliff, I haven't seen it, but I have Secret seen Gay. two. I have seen two others, and they're both huh. good. Cliff Tuh. I always thought it was Cliff Fuh. No, it's Clift. Huh? Like yeah. Clift Palette. Except I know it's Cliff. Like but. Clift <laughs> Palette. No, like to, like uh, like Clift from Cheers. <laughs> ah, of course, Clift Clavton. Uh so I yeah I I have a note that's not in the in the like, things is um. We discussed this off air. Fuck Frank Sinatra. He's a bad fucking actor. <laughs> Jack yeah. Palance for the as the bad guy in Shane absolutely wins best supporting actor. Yeah. Hands down. And I bet you he could do as many push ups in nineteen fifty three as he did in nineteen ninety one? Two? Two. Two. When he won for uh, City Slickers. Yeah. But yeah, I, uh, I don't know if there's enough I've seen. Like I've seen Julius Caesar, but who cares? I've seen um, uh, I've seen Roman Holiday and Stalag Seventeen, both very good. Uh, uh, and, I and Shane, Shane is the other one. And, I and you've seen Shane. Think yeah. I've seen. Um, I think I think Stalag Seventeen wins director for Billy Wilder, maybe actor for William Holden. Uh, if not, then it's Roman Holiday for Gregory Peck. I'm between those two, and for yeah, for picture, like I haven't seen from here to eternity, so maybe it should win, but um, I haven't. So I guess, I guess Stalag Seventeen. Fair. 
I've seen it, and I will never see it. Fair enough. Uh, it's good. You should 1952. See it. I have exactly one movie. The winner was The Greatest Show on Earth. Uh, I don't care about Cecil the circus. Uh, the answer is Rashomon. The answer is Rashomon. The best director is Akira Kurosawa. Yes. And it's probably Toshiro Mufune again yep. as best actor. I think so. But you whitewashed bastards who only like movies about white people. Uh, also, High Noon is something I've always wanted to see, but I've never seen. Uh, okay. Because I like westerns. Yep. Because I like them. I like shoot 'ems. <laughs> I like pow, pow, pow. Um, 1951, I made no notes. 51's an interesting 51 one. 51 is an American in Paris, which I haven't seen. That Well, that's it's wrong. It's Streetcar Named Desire. I haven't seen it. So what's, I, but what's funny about Streetcar Named Desire is that it swept the acting awards yeah except marlon brando well that's they, insane they knew the awful things he was gonna do and they couldn't give it in their that's conscience insane that he's the lead in the in the movie that won and they were like nah <laughs> that vivian <laughs> only, lay only, only the supporting actors were good in that movie carl malden and kim hunter all win blanche mitch and stella and fucking Stanley doesn't get it. Yeah, no, he fucking smokes Humphrey Bogart and the African Queen. Just him. Oh, and- I bet you he would let Humphrey Bogart smoke him. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't care about the Bogey and Hepburn sucking each other's dicks in a canoe on the Nile. <laughs> well, I also don't. So, correct. Uh, and you do- street streetcar all the way around. All the way around. The only other movie is Alice in Wonderland. Uh, 1950, I've got no notes. The winner was All About Eve, which obviously I haven't seen. I got... But I don't think I've seen anything else from 1950. I got three from 1950. Sunset Boulevard. Yes. Uh, Father of the Bride. No, only Steve Martin. I've only seen Steve Martin. Is that... Spencer Price? Spencer Tracy. Spencer Tracy, yeah. Again, looking at the TV on an angle doesn't help. <laughs> it's tricky. Uh, you got your Sunset Boulevard. You got uh, The Third Man, which is like a... I've never seen it, but... Like a British noir. It's good. Yeah, it's uh, uh, Orson Welles, right? E- yeah. I think yes. it's Orson Welles. There is an actress nomination if you go up. You're an actress. Carol Reed, The Third Man. Oh, sorry. No, it's Carol... Yeah, it's not... Uh, it's, sorry, directing, directing, directing. You... No, it's another guy named Carol. Orson, Orson is in it. Or- yeah, so, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought you meant, direct, I meant yeah. It's Orson Welles as an actor. Yes. Although I'm not 100% certain that I didn't know he didn't direct it. Now you do. Now I do. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Harvey. Jimmy Stewart, Imaginary Bunny. Harvey Milk? Not Harvey Milk. No. Uh, Replace I- gay guys with six foot tall bunnies. Well, never seen it. It's great. I don't, this is the first time hearing of it. Really? Oh, check it out. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, check it out. Harvey's cool. But, uh... Yeah, I th- I'll, su- I'll go Sunset Boulevard. Uh, picture, director, actress for Gloria Swanson, and actor Jimmy Stewart for Harvey. Sorry, William Holden. You didn't make it for Sunset. You like You're the him. Marlon Brando of this streetcar. You don't like William Holden at all. You haven't been giving him anything. I do like William Holden at uh, was it, where, where are we? 1949? If you're wondering if I have anything written for 1949 or 1948, you're sorely out of luck, because I don't. Uh, the only thing I wrote for 1949, so the winner was All the King's Men. I've seen the remake of it in the 70s. Yeah. Uh, Redford and Hoffman, 70s? Yes. Yeah. I've seen that one. Uh, the only thing that I wrote is The Bicycle Thief or Bicycle Thief. And uh, oh, I, m- I missed that. Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's in there. You can just search for bicycle, you know, but I don't want to type it's it's in here. You gotta, be- you gotta believe me, <laughs> you gotta trust me on this. Uh, yeah, so I wrote Bicycle Thief for uh, right here, but Bicycle Thieves, Bicycle Thieves. Okay, uh, I wrote it, yeah, that's okay. the only, it's the only yeah. one I have, and it's good. Yeah. So I put it for best picture, and I put Vittorio De Siza for director. Uh, yep. Now, now I do too because I missed it. It's the only movie I've seen of that year. Yep, me too. Um, and then 1948. 48. 
I got best, nothing. Best picture was Hamlet. Boring. Uh, but, so I put, and like maybe my favorite movie pre nineteen fifty. Sierra Madre is Sierra Madre. Treasure of the Sierra Madre is such a yeah. rad movie. Uh, I put that for best picture. It won for best director, um, and then it, I think it won. Did it win best supporting? Yeah, uh, Walter Houston, for, which who is John Houston's dad? John Houston's dad. Yeah, um, and then oh, and hey, two uh, two dads in supporting actor. Uh, Jose Ferrer, also oh, uh, Miguel dad. Ferrer's. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then the only other uh, change I did was uh, Ingrid Bergman for Joan of Arc. Okay. Uh, as Joan of Arc, sorry. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah, that's the only other movie I've seen of that year. So, uh, man, yeah, here we go. 47, I got nothing. You got anything? Yes. Now, 47, we... Gentleman's Agreement 1. 47, we talked about off uh, air. You were going through it. You're like, I, I've seen nothing here. I'm like, I have one very important movie written down for 1947, which I don't know if you've seen, but you definitely know of. That movie is Song of the South. <laughs> Never seen it. But it was nominated? Yeah, for something. Yeah. For, for Zippity Duda. There you go. Ah, there you go. Yeah. Never seen it. So, uh, yeah. So is that your best picture? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> But I like it. <laughs> Bring it out of the vault, Disney. Bring it out. Release the emails. And by emails, I mean the videotape. <laughs> the, the racist movie. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, 46, I got nothing. The, the best year of years of our lives. What? What? Sorry, what's the title the of it? The worst year of our lives? Interesting. Pretty uh, sus, 1946. Never seen it. Taking our name like never that. Never seen it. Didn't I've seen it two okay. from this year. Those are... It's a Wonderful Life and it. Alfred Hitchcock's Notorious. I've never seen Notorious. You haven't seen It's a Wonderful Life. I've never seen It's a Wonderful Life and I've never seen Interesting. Notorious. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Stewart wins for Wonderful Life and Hitchcock probably wins the other things. You're not a Frank Capra fan? Uh, I mean... He's Italian. Don't give it to him. <laughs> he's a dirty eye tie. M like most of Capra stuff is pretty cheesy. I mean, including It's a Wonderful Life, yeah. but It's a Wonderful Life is good. Uh, and eh. Jimmy Stewart's good. Eh. Uh, okay, now we're into the good years. Now we're into the war years. I have uh, the Lost Weekend one. I got nothing written down. That's uh, the Lost Weekend is all I have. Now uh, c click on the Lost Weekend. Is it the one I was thinking of? I don't know, man. Uh. Scroll down. I think the last weekend might be the the other. Is it based on a play? What's it uh, uh, based on? The last weekend by Charles R. Jackson. Is that a play? No. Or is it a? I don't think this is the one I was thinking of. God damn it! Well, sucks to suck, Scott. Sure does. I'm gonna need. Okay, let's be very clear. I need people <laughs> to write in and tell me. What the other movie is, I'm thinking <laughs> 50s or 60s, based on a stage play of just a bunch of drunk people arguing. It's like a family or something. Or Friends. I'm. Ugh. Is it Friends? Is it an episode of Friends? I don't think it's an episode of Friends. It might be an episode of the Jewish version of Friends, Lens. <laughs> <laughs> but not Spens. <laughs> not Spens. Uh, please, so yeah. please tell me. It's absolutely killing yeah, me. But you also, might... I'm... 90% sure earlier in the podcast we said Probably. the name of it. Probably. Uh, okay, so you got nothing, no changes, whatever, for 50, 45? Uh, 45 is last weekend all the way around. Okay. Uh, 1944, the winner was going my way. I have nothing. I don't think I've seen any 1944, movies. Double Indemnity. Huh. I, I need to, like, I've seen Ooh. some of the big ones. I want to watch more. There's a movie more. called Gaslight, which is right up your alley. An Ingrid Bergman movie called Gaslight. I hope it's about people being mean to Ingrid Bergman. <laughs> I, I, that's right up your alley. Absolutely. You've said some terrible things about her. But yeah, I I do like my like 30s and 40s noir. And yeah, I've seen some, but I'd like to see more. Me too. Uh, 1943. I got nothing Casablanca for one. That is incorrect, sir. Casablanca won amongst, like, 12 nominees for some fucking reason uh, this which year. Which I have seen zero of, um, including Casablanca. So... Yeah, that's why uh, I have no the, opinion. The correct winners were 
Uh, best picture is Shadow of a Doubt. Okay. Best director is Alfred Hitchcock. Actor Joseph Cotton and actress Teresa Wright. It's a problem. Well, that's that's easy. Yeah, I have never cared to see Casablanca. I'll see it at some point in my life, but right now I've said and, that, but I'm old now and I still haven't seen it. So uh, maybe I just won't see it. That's true. But I ju- did just see The Godfather. That's so. true. Good on you. Uh, but you're a young man. Forty two. I got nothing. Forty two. Mi- I've Mrs. got Mrs. Miniver. Mrs. Minivan. Uh, 42, I've got uh, The Magnificent Ambersons, Orson Welles' Citizen Kane follow-up, which is very good. And apparently the studio 1000% RKO. Th- RKO fucked him on this movie. Nice. Uh, because what he, uh, he like went... I don't know if he just like went on a vacation out of the country, but he was out of the country for some reason. And uh, R- RKO like edited off the last half hour of the movie and made it a happy ending. <laughs> and he was... And he had no idea? Furious. And then just straight yeah. up released it. Yeah. And 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 destroyed the footage they edited. I like that maneuver. Yeah. Like, irretrievable. Petty shit. I love it. Yeah. Uh, the only other one for this is uh, I've always wanted to see The Pride of the Yankees, but I've, ne- I've never gotten around to seeing it. Yes. Uh, so... I think going forward is there. Let's just say the ones that we have notes for. Let, let's go to let's go to nineteen forty, and then it's a real quick trip to the end from there. So okay. so like continue. So yeah. that was forty two. Yeah, forty one. The winner was how green was your va- my valley? Wrong. Also, also known is how pink is your pussy? Yeah, and also it's not Citizen Kane. <laughs> the winner. The winner for picture director actor done. What the fuck are you talking uh, about? How green was my valley? Uh, Get out of here. Apparently not green enough. Also, the Maltese Falcon it's, is good, but it's not Citizen Kane. Yeah. Uh, 1940. 40, I have a surprising amount written, and by that I mean four movies. Rebecca won. Rebecca won. Which and, I was surprised by. Yeah, but it can stay. Because good for... This is when they gave Hitchcock awards. 1940. 40. Not 1960. Go to hell, psycho. The Great Dictator awesome great dictator great charlie chaplin talking would... and being hitler yeah okay <laughs> i'm giving him best actor because you don't get to play fake hitler and not, and not get the oscar 100 percent fair if you play real hitler you don't get it yes. but if you play fake hitler yes. you get it they never call them he's hitler. not hitler he's just the tramp as the dictator <laughs> Yeah, uh, so you got Rebecca, Great Dictator, The Philadelphia Story, and Pinocchio. Uh, a lot of... Because... A lot of furries, uh, TF Awakening. Yeah, gross. You want to have your awakening to a goddamn donkey? I mean, again, it's a beggar's can't, can't be chooser situation. I guess so. You get your boners how you get them, and then you just deal with them. I mean, and it's got some classic, like, it's got some classic TF tropes. Mm-hmm. It's got the like the tail burst through the pants, a classic, classic, a classic erection machine. <laughs> the second you see that coming through, you're like, "Holy fuck!" <laughs> I've never been so hard in this my life. This is the hardest I've been. It hurts. I am. I've got prehistoric wood right now. <laughs> it hurts so bad. <laughs> Someone come jerk me off so it'll go away. <laughs> I'm too. I'm too lazy to do it myself. No, because when you got a real hard boner, someone you, else has. You to. want someone else to do it for you. Yeah, yeah. It be, it's no longer your problem. It becomes the world's problem. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Uh. So yeah. So yeah. Probably Rebecca for picture director, and uh, yeah. Ju- I mean, Jimmy Stewart's good for a Philadelphia Story. Um, Is that where Jimmy Stewart gets AIDS? <laughs> the original yeah the, F- Philadelphia 1992 is a remake <laughs> 93 whatever um well who's the who's the woman in the Philadelphia story she nominated Hepburn yeah yeah Hepburn Hepburn can win Philadelphia story sorry James Stewart I like you a lot but we'll give her the chaplain for fake Hitler the barber and for Adenoid, Adenoid Hinkle. Hinkle very nice love it Oh, you're not a big Ginger Rogers fan? I mean, 
not I was gonna say not when she's not with Fred Astaire but maybe she is in Kitty Foil because I don't know Kitty Foil doesn't look like it Dennis Morgan James Craig well there you go then she can fuck off if she's not dancing with Fred I don't care I don't like the dancing I don't like the dancing I I don't like the singing I love that there was so much dancing in movies that there's a dancing Oscar in the 30s yeah 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 also there's some weird stuff they um there's a uh it, it might be even further back. It might be into the 30s. But there's a there's best screenplay, yeah. Best story, yeah. And best screenplay and story. Mm-hmm. What? Because they wanted to give out as many as they could. So screenplay is writing. Yeah. Story is concept. I yeah I guess or like context of the story, like yeah. what it is. And screenplay and story is question mark. <laughs> Couldn't tell you. Yeah. Very interesting. Very and and they weird. also get, used to give out uh, a kids rock Oscar, ah, the yes. juvenile award. Yes, to your Shirley Temples and your whatnot. Yeah, I like making an award so that you can give it to a child actor. Yeah. Uh, that, by the way, that was sarcasm. Uh, that is me that's, not thinking it's that's cool. stupid. It's dumb. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, as I said, Pinocchio across the board. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now that we're into the thirties, so. For for the 1930s, I have four movies... For the 1930s and the bit of the 20s yeah. for the Oscars, I have four movies total written. Three of them are 1939. <laughs> okay. So I'm done pretty quick. Okay. As as is tradition. 39, you've got your Wizard of Oz, obviously. Yeah. Um, the original of Mice and Men, and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Mm-hmm. More Jimmy Stewart. Yeah. Um, I think Wizard of Oz wins... Uh, picture direction. Allow me uh. to maybe sway you in the direction of winner Gone with the Wind. Because the movie... Don't care. Let, let me hear, uh, let, uh, hear, uh, me uh, uh, hear me out. Pardon me? I like a movie uh-huh. that glorifies the South yep. as the good guys. Absolutely. Like the movie makes you think hey, the South weren't the bad guys. It was all that... We just have a different way of living. It right? was all that northern aggression. Nor- the North started it. Yeah. They they shot first. Uh, shout out to Hattie McDaniel, supporting actress winner. Uh, first and only black Oscar winner for 30 years. <laughs> yep. And then one for Poitier, and then, I don't know, probably another 40 years after that. And then Denzel. <laughs> Denzel, I guess. Yeah. Slim Pickens. For a while. Slim Pickens. Did he win an Oscar? I, he, no, and also not black. Oh. <laughs> also one of the whitest people of all time. <laughs> this is news to me. <laughs> I just know the name. I don't think I actually know the guy. You know oh, yeah. Okay. I know Dr. Strangelove. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah gotcha, gotcha. Who, uh, I, P.S., they didn't tell it was a comedy. <laughs> did you know that? No, I did not. Yeah. Yeah. Kubrick, like, had, like treated Pickens and everything you told him was like this is a drama yeah. be very serious okay yeah it's about the Reds and also ride, ride an A-bomb like a buck and bronco <laughs> <laughs> ballsy move so yeah Wizard of Oz Mice and Men Mr. Smith Goes to Washington for 1939 Wizard of Oz is uh, the big winner there and then the only other movie I have written down, period, is uh, The Thin Man for 1934, because I love me some Nick and Nora. I hear they even have a... Uh, oh, I'm going to mute you. Uh, I'm going to mute you. Uh, gonna mute you. Uh, no! Yeah, you're going to get muted if you continue this, this fine, lame fine, fucking joke. Fine, 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 fine. An infinite playlist. I was going to say, this, <laughs> this is the point where you blurt it out as fast as you can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what about the Hunchback of Notre Dame? Haven't seen it. Notre Dame. Haven't seen it or even the Disney one because it's after 1994 yeah. and I quit at the line. I don't King. think I've seen the animated one. What about Wuthering Heights? What about Stagecoach? I mean, I like a Stagecoach as much as the next. I guy. haven't seen Stagecoach, but I I should because it's uh, it's a western. It's a western. You probably see your western. And it's uh, got John Wayne in it. So yeah. So what are you doing? I don't know. It's 39. It's too old for me. Too old. Too old is a thing I'm used to saying. Yeah, a thing I'm used to being told. <laughs> <laughs> yes, also that. <laughs> Would you like to have sex with me? No, too old. <laughs> Would I like to have sex with you? No, no too, too old. old. 
All right. So for, we, for the purposes uh, of both of those conversations, uh, we were in our mid to late thirties, and the girl was twelve. Oh God. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, how long do you think this went? Oh, I bet two and a half. We're we're a, a just slightly under two and a half. I think. Well, that's not that bad for doing what sixty three years. Yeah, twenty seven to eighty nine. Rush inclusive. I know it sounds like sixty two, but you have to count the first and the last one, people. I hate it when people get that wrong. You know when people, <laughs> you know when you say like uh, I did I did numbers. 10 through 16. You're like, oh, you did six numbers? No, motherfucker. I did seven. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, B, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. I never misfiled anything. I'm a vampire. (laughs) (laughs) Can we watch the vampires kiss every day? Yeah. It's so good. We can. Is it the best crazy cage? Also, I'm going to mute you. Please don't mute me. Uh, Crazy Cage? It's one of the best. I mean, the bees. The bees are pretty good. But for, like, that girl. But for the whole movie? Yeah, at least the whole movie, yeah. Because, like, a lot of people forget that most of the work of men is very boring. Yeah. It is. All right, well, it's time to eat, so... Uh, <laughs> oh, my God, I'm... St- I'm starving! I'm gonna die. I'm starving. I could eat an entire horse cock. Um, <laughs> I'm so hungry I could fuck a horse. <laughs> So, if you enjoyed listening to all two and a half hours of this goddamn podcast... Good on you. Uh, I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm, um, have we done emergency apologies? Oh, yeah. Do your emergency apology. I have an emergency apology for the year 1990, where I would like to state that the winner of Best Picture and Best Director should have been Goodfellas and Martin Scorsese. And not... And not... Dances with Wolves and Kevin Costner. That's right. As soon as we went off the air, I had a mild You're panic like, attack <laughs> that I didn't uh, say the right I movie, doing? and I had to change it. That's good. You feel better now? Uh, nope. Good. I still feel horrible, and let's hurry up to get some fucking food in us. That's, uh, that's pretty fair. Uh, again, if you want us to talk more about movies, <laughs> please send $25 per movie request. Two, paypal.me slash not scott henson let us know what you pick let us know what to call you when we reference you make sure you pick a pixar movie so we have to watch it i will refund your money no. if you pick a pixar movie. if you send money to scott with a pixar movie send me a private message <laughs> telling me that you did it and i'm going to refuse to do this podcast unless he watches the pixar movie. this is ending in divorce <laughs> yeah absolutely it's ending in divorce this is most definitely ending in divorce so yeah, if you'd like to ruin both of our lives, go ahead and do that. What is the mon- What is the dollar amount that you would watch a Pixar movie? Ten thousand dollars. If somebody doubles the money and gives fifty dollars no, for a not Pixar even movie. close for fifty bucks. Wow, not even fucking. You are close. such a coward. I'm a man who is set in his ways. Yeah. of thinking Pixar is gay, <laughs> <laughs> and it's you... going to take more than fifty bucks to change that. That being said, I'll probably have sex with a man for fifty dollars. <laughs> You'll pay them fifty dollars. <laughs> uh, did we? Did I we... will. I will become for real gay for fifty dollars, but I won't watch a Pixar. Did movie. we even do handles at the beginning? No, we just skipped right over it. So now's the best time because this is what this is when the most people hear it. Yeah, I, is that the, the final two minutes of the podcast? Yeah, and, and also uh, t- two hours and thirty-two minutes yeah. into it, whatever. Uh, yeah, so this is definitely the time to get the the good plugs in. Uh, hey, I'm at not Scott Henson on Twitter, the same as the PayPal PayPal dot me slash not Scott Henson. Keep it simple, stupid. I'm at Sarian Softpaws on the social medias, and I'm Drew Sarian on Letterboxd. I think I'm also the same thing on Letterboxd, but who's to say? Uh, secret letter is E. Let's be very clear about that. And uh, we're coming up on the uh, the end of that secret message, so e. we'll have more we'll have more information about the secret message as we get down to the wire. But uh, all you, the only time sensitive thing right now is you've got one week from right now end of day august 26th to get in your money and movie picks so do it you cowards i love you kitchen gun this is an emergency addendum 
to the podcast because it wasn't long enough. The movie I was fucking trying to think of that is based on a play with a bunch of drunk people sitting around arguing is Long Day's Journey in Tonight. And I guess the reason we couldn't find it is because the director of it is Sidney Lumet and Drew didn't fucking read it from his list in his filmography, you fucking asshole. Turn it off. Don't even talk. No, I'm, I'm so not mad at you. It off. I'm so mad you at you. You said it was the year previous to what we did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You said it was before the one we were on. So I only read from the year we you were You read at. starting at 12 Angry Men, which was his no, first movie. No, I said 12 Angry Men. You said, no, it's way after that. Well, it is. So I went to the year we were at and read backwards. <sighs> I read because we had already talked about it and you said it was from the year before we were at. So I read everything from that year backwards and then you said, no, nope, no, it's before that. Stop, stop, stop. Because we read his filmography earlier. Yep. And that's where we saw it. But yes. then when you said we talked about it earlier, meaning to me and where we started, no, we talked about it earlier the Oscars we in had the done. podcast. Yes. Yeah, but I was but not reading, chronologically yeah, moving. So it is not my fault. We're getting a divorce.